in June, more than in 2006 when new measures were introduced. Louise Bladen is a director at the National Audit Office. There are currently about 4,200 foreign national offenders who've been released from prison pending deportation. So they're, they're foreign national offenders living in the community. And of that number, we found that 760 had absconded, so the Home Office doesn't know where they are. The World Health Organisation says treatments to tackle the Ebola outbreak in West Africa could become available within a few weeks and a vaccine could be ready by January. Meanwhile, a Bedfordshire-based company is struggling to meet demand for Ebola survival equipment. Preppers in Roxton now has an entire range devoted to emergency Ebola supplies. Owner Lincoln Miles says orders have soared. Almost all of our supplies are sold out. We went from selling about five a week to run about 50, 60 a week. As soon as they're coming in, before they're on the shelf, they're straight out the door. The majority of them are in the UK. We've had a couple in America. I was surprised by the amount of people that that were interested in it and that are getting themselves prepared. I wasn't expecting as much. Police are appealing for witnesses after around £20 worth of coins were stolen from a charity wishing well in St Albans. The well, belonging to the Hearts and Middlesex Wildlife Trust in Verulamium Park, was raided earlier this month by thieves who cut off a padlock and metal grill. GPs in England are to be paid £55 every time they diagnose a case of dementia. Health chiefs say the payments are intended to increase the number of people who receive treatment. In sport, Watford are down to second in the championship after being held two all at home by Nottingham Forest. MK Dons moved up to fourth in League One after a 2-1 win at home to Fleetwood. Wickham stay top of League Two despite losing 2-1 at Exeter, but Luton a third and just a point behind Wickham after a 3-1 win over Dagenham. Cullen left footed, strikes and scores! It's a hat-trick for Cullen! Cullen is, I think, is a terrific all-round player. I just do, I think he's a terrific player. And Stevenage lost 3-2 at Portsmouth. The weather, a dry, sunny but chilly start. Cloud increasing through the day, but most parts will stay dry. A maximum temperature 13 degrees Celsius. And you can get the latest news and sport online at bbc.co.uk slash three counties. Today on BBC Three Counties Radio. From nine. The JVS Show. With the big phone in, the hottest topic of the day and your consumer problems. From 12. Nick Coffer. Off to the cinema with Richard Germain and hearing about Old Warden Aerodrome and the Airfield Volunteer Fire Service. From three. Roberto Peroni. I'm here with a roundup of the day's news, the latest travel and your stories. From seven. Mark Forrest. I'll bring you the best bits from everything that's been happening on BBC Local Radio. Today. Day on BBC Three Counties Radio. I love Big Bum. Oh, yeah. It's just hit me, man. I was I was all up for it until about what twenty seven seconds ago, and it's just it's just hit me like a a deep thug. Oh dear. Yeah. That Hello, doesn't Catherine. Bode well. Catherine Boyle. Yep. How are you? Yeah, same. Okay. Yeah. How are you? Oh, how are you? I, I'm going to ask you to read the menu because I can't read it. Why? Because you've written it in weird. I've not written it in weird, I've written it in English. <laughs> oh. Let's Hang on, let me get it. Let me get that. Let's be having you. Let's be. I can do the first one. Taxi roulette. This Taxi is what's coming roulette. up in the show. Taxi Ebola bonanza. Yes. And wish thieves strike in St Albans. Oh, for goodness sakes. 08459 455 555. What's your beef? That was fine. Mm. Hearts and Bucks. This is BBC Three Counties Radio. The first... What, what idiot thought that this would make a good opening song? Oh, no, no, no. No, no, no. We're no. not playing the bland... I hate reggae, but the bland white reggae of um, UB40s... I'm in trouble with my mum, Kath. Yeah. Again. I'm, I'm in trouble with my mum because Neil Diamond is playing a series of concerts. Every time Neil Diamond has been over in the last... 20 years, I've taken my mum to, to go and see Neil Diamond. So you've set a precedent, your I've fault. set the precedent of the United States of Rock, Neil Diamond. What? Who's, going to, who's going to see Neil Diamond? Not uh, my not mum. mum. She's got beef. She's got beef. She said, oh, I, I see, I, I just, I knew, I've lied to my mum. She, I, I knew the tickets were going to go on sale, I couldn't be bothered, right? <gasps> and she phoned up, she said, oh, I, I see Neil Diamond tickets have gone on sale two days ago. Maybe you could get me one for Christmas. I was like, oh, I didn't realise. I'll have a look. Now, the thing is, right, my mum's in a wheelchair. Loads of people in wheelchairs love Neil Diamond. Why? I've got no idea. He just seems to speak their language. Um, but there's not many wheelchair seats at the O2 Arena. And they're all at the back, which I think is rude. Anyway, that's by the by. 
And I know for a fact, having ch- chased this horse before... The Neil Diamond horse. The Neil Diamond wheelchair horse. They'll all be gone. All the disabled seating area will be gone. So, yeah, you're right. Don't even try for your mum. Well, I mean... Uh, for your mum, you know. I'm not, I'm not being funny. It's not my fault she's in a wheelchair. Oh. And if she could walk, I could get her tickets... Oh, right, so it's her fault. Well, I mean... It's Neil Diamond's fault, but mostly your mum's fault. It's not... I mean, technically, it's not my mum's fault, but I, I certainly hold her responsible. Kind of blame her, yeah. I, do, I blame her for yeah. it, yeah. Yeah, that's, fa- that's fair enough. Well, I, OK, well, what I'll do today is I'll phone up the O2 Arena and say, have you got any wheelchair... We haven't got any. They, all, they start out really quickly. Neil Diamond speaks their language. And then my mum's heart will be broken. And it'll be your fault, Catherine. Oh, right, OK. I sat next to you the other day and you went, I'm not going to get her tickets. Sorry? You said you weren't going to bother. Whoa, whoa. I don't think I said anything yeah, of the you sort. Did. And you threw in a sexual swear word. I did, actually. I'm not going to get any tickets. All right, now you, now you put it like that. Yeah, I remember, I remember saying that. Yeah. Oh, I'm in terrible you trouble. You see, you're silly because my mum just expects a panto ticket every year. No. Neil Diamond's something else. Well, we're going to go... Oh, my that's right pain, isn't it? I, know. I mean, it's, it's more of a pain for her. She's, she's you know, the one... It's not going to see... It's not going to see, you know. I, I mean, I could technically go myself. I'd be able to get a, a normal seated ticket, so I could go. Why don't you go? Tell her what it's like. Yeah. All right, yeah, I'll do that. Well, maybe phone her when you're in there. You've got a little uh, Mr. Majika. I know, my hair is sticking up on end today, and there's not a damn thing I can do about it. OK, get some pomade. Now, Milton Keynes Council is opposing government plans to cut red tape in the taxi industry. Background checks are being carried out on the area's cabbies after it emerged that a serial rapist had been passed fit to take fares. Well, last night, the House of Lords voted in favour of a bill which would allow taxi companies to sell your booking onto whoever they wished. If passed, travelling by cab could become, well, a little bit of a lottery. Our political reporter, Paul Scoynes, has been following this one. What's this bill, Paul? Uh, Ian, this is the deregulation bill. Don't get too excited. It is actually not. one of those bills that you, uh, that you, the, the, the government is calling its red tape bill. It is cutting lots of what it says unnecessary red tape. So it says that it's going to get rid of areas uh, of uh, where you, if you're a business, you have to have health and safety rules. It's scrapping some of those, uh, making it uh, more sort of likely that if you put your bin out on the wrong day, you won't get fined. Those sorts of things, simplifying things. And, and what critics say is that actually all this is doing is that it's lumping a load of regulation together so that at the end of this parliament, the government could say, look at all this red tape we've cut. And as part of that, there were three clauses uh, about taxi regulation, and that's what got everybody so excited. Uh, parts of this bill were being criticised by charities and MPs alike, weren't they? Yeah, there were three it? parts, as I say, originally. Now, one of them was dropped last week, and that, if you like, was the more concerning one for campaigners. That was a clause which said that, uh, basically, if I owned a taxi, and I would I would be able to lend it to you, you could go and drive it around, but just for your private use. Uh, and that would mean that um, the, you couldn't go and pick up fares. But what, what campaigners said was, actually, there's no way that anyone would be able to check if you were applying for trade or not. Uh, the idea was that it would mean that taxi drivers wouldn't have to have second vehicles because, uh, you know, if their wife wanted to or husband wanted to go and, you know, go to the shops in the taxi under current regulation, they wouldn't be able to. Anyway, that was... Husband, you're week. implying there are such things as female taxi drivers, Paul. That's insane, <laughs> for goodness <laughs> sake. I know. Is this the no. end of it? Well, it's not, because um, the, the two clauses that were also concerned, uh, count, uh, councils and indeed campaigners, are still going through. There was a vote last night on, on a, a Labour amendment to get rid of them, and they're going through. So that means that uh, the drivers will now uh, be checked every three years rather than every one year. Campaigners say that's an issue, uh, you, you know, if it just doesn't keep the safety record up to date. And also the other um, issue is that uh, now that a company can subcontract your booking, now what that means is if you call up your regular taxi company that you know and trust, uh, they could actually hand it over to one you don't like or even one from outside of the area uh, and indeed you could get picked up by a complete stranger. Uh, so that that's also possible if this bill goes ahead. Now we're at the, the Lords stage so of course there's a bit of progression to go through Parliament but uh, what's likely to happen is that uh, the committee stage of this this House of Lords is going to finish by the end of the month, and then we'll go back to uh, go back to Parliament for the final sort of vote on it. So, uh, campaigners and the council, Milton Keynes Council, objected strongly to this because it said it had been going through 
through this process of trying to sort out its own taxi regulation, said it had found major flaws across the country and that this bill was doing nothing to help it. Scoins, uh, uh, finally, I'm in big trouble with my mum because I've not got her wheelchair access tickets to go and see Neil Diamond. Any, any tips? Have you given her any red, red wine? You suggest I get my mother drunk? Well, it will take her mind off it. Yeah, you're right. She won't want to see that in real life, will she? Nah, I think I'll go and just draw pictures and show them to her. Travel news for beds, cards and bugs. BBC Three Counties Radio. Well, a very good morning. And so far this morning, taking... Good morning to you. (laughs) Taking a look at the cameras. I I hope you're well today. (laughs) 
<laughs> Are you Thank well? You. Marvellously so. Great. Had so far. What did you do last night? <laughs> a bit of exercise. Oh, was mm. that um, as, as with a class, or were you doing that on your own? Uh, that was a class. Oh, fantastic. Yeah, thank you. Bit of Pilates. Oh, wonderful. <laughs> not, not being rude, but could you get on with the travel, please? Oh, That's I what we're waiting apologize. for. Yeah, unbelievable behaviour. So the M1 and the A1M moving well. In Milton Keynes, we have been seeing delays on standing way at Newport Road, so do expect delays there as some roadworks are continuing. Also in Luton, there's some temporary traffic lights up on Dunstable Road, just near Thornhill Road, so do expect delays there. Checking on the departure boards for the trains across the three counties, everything's running well. Nicola Richards, BBC Three Counties Radio. And were you exhausted at the end of your exercising? I'm in a little bit of pain now, yeah. yeah. What did you have mm. for supper? Um, I had something very healthy, actually. Avocado salad. Oh. Not being funny, Nicola. Can we do this off air? I've got, I've got a radio show to do, mate. I don't know what... Uh, oh, my I... bad. Apologies. Y- yeah, thank you. What a strange, strange woman. But I've got a radio show to do. I've got time to t- talk about avocados. Or, or, what? here's a question for you, Kelly. Don't answer it, Mum. What did the avocado used to be called, Kelly Betts? Avocado. What Half, did the... Av- Pastacado. Oh, for goodness sakes. You know, don't you, Mum? What did the avocado used to be called? D- uh, Catherine, sorry. <laughs> sorry, oh, yeah, me. No, I don't know. Do you not know? Oh, no. <laughs> you suckers. Oh, wait, four, five, Some nine. kind of pear? Avocado. You got it right, the avocado pear. That's not what it used to be called, but it's still called. No, it's not. It's called the... Absolute. Av- it's, no, it's not called. You don't... Have you ever heard of the phrase avocado pear, K- uh, Kelly? No, not unless there's two of them. Right, so it's not still called that. It is. It's not. 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 Oh, your microphone's off. I got the last word in there for I win. This is the BBC. Your licence fee paid for that nonsense. 6.18. I should probably do the news, shouldn't I? Here it is. Milton Keynes Council has objected to government plans to cut red tape in the taxi industry. But last night, the House of Lords said controversial parts of the deregulation bill could go ahead. A Bedfordshire-based company says it's struggling to meet demand for Ebola survival equipment. And in last night's football, there were wins for MK Dons and Luton, a draw for Watford and defeats for Wickham. And Stevenage. See Three Counties Radio. Speaking of football, on Saturday afternoon, live football is the order of the day. We'll start with hearing how the managers are thinking. Both going into it in good form, which sure we know how difficult the afternoon's going to be. I want the individuals to flourish, I want the individuals to get better. Then move on to live commentary of Watford, Luton, MK Dons and Stevenage. On to his right foot, goes for the far corner and scores! Great strike and Watford take the lead here! Straight into the bump of Freeman and it's a gift and Stevenage have the lead! Rounding off the day, there's your views and all the reaction after the final whistles. He seems bulletproof to me, but football-wise, he's doing Deluded and clueless. Three County Sport, Saturday from 2, here on BBC Three Counties Radio. The abuse is already starting on the uh, telephones. Um, people are phoning. I don't like reggae. I love it. I don't. I hate it. And I don't like cricket. I love it. I don't. I hate that as well. I don't like reggae. Uh, and I particularly don't like, uh, as I said yesterday, any, any form of music that w- makes me want to do a poo, that's got to be bad, hasn't it? That's got to be bad. You don't like the bass line. I don't like it any of it. Ship down your spine. Oh, yeah. Uh, and also, I don't. Like, I particularly don't like watered down white reggae, a la Ube Forty. I just think it's an awful, awful noise. Mm. Oh eight four five nine four double five five double five. People are, are doing what I like to call the hit and indeed the run. They're phoning up to have a pop, and then when uh, Kelly tries to phone the back to get them on air, they um oh da- oh David, you decided to answer the phone, did you? Yeah, we. <laughs> You bought because you phoned up to have a pop and then you bottled it. Kelly's phoning you no, back. No. You you got a bit scared. No, I got scared. I was at work, so I just got back in advance. You got scared. You just got back in advance. In the van. In the van. Oh, you got back in the van. Okay, you're back in the yeah. van. Okay. Yeah. You know what, what I'm saying, Lee. It's Ian. You can't say that you, you can't. You can't say um you you hate reggae. I can't say it. I hate reggae. No, you can't hate reggae. I can't hate reggae. You're... I hate it. I'm hating reggae now. I hate it. <laughs> Yeah. No, you can't hear reggae. It's, it's not Ian. Good to hear reggae. Yeah. I, right. First of all, it's Ian. And secondly, I can't say I hate Ian. reggae. I'm saying it. I hate you reggae. Cannot, you cannot hear reggae. I reggae can't hate reggae. I hate reggae. 
Okay, Mr. Lee. All right, go to the end. Why can't I say I hate reggae? Yeah, well, you, you, because there's, there's a lot of West Indian listening to this program. Well, I'm, not saying I hate, I'm not saying I hate West Indians. <laughs> the, the reggae music, that's where it comes from. Yeah, but I'm not saying I hate West India, wherever that is. The West Indies. I'm not saying that. I'm just saying I don't like the reggae music. Oh, I hear you. Yeah. Anyway, good, good program. Yeah, isn't it? Yeah. Hang on a second, what's this doing here? What's this, sir? Uh... Big shout out to David. For the people and one. What? Patchy Indian boom shakalaka. Oh, you're having a laugh. Come on, wind it. You think he could have afforded real trumpets? Oh, no. Come on. You're having a laugh, aren't you? Oh. Bye bye. this one deals oh this song is just incredible do you know what that's the classy side of stop oh, aching waterman mate. beautiful stuff they they really could churn out the tunes couldn't mm, they? they could they they were just amazing mm-hmm. very factory. underrated the still factory. factory yeah yeah uh, well do you know what i'd like actually a night at the royal albert hall Right, hmm. Stock Aitken and Waterman there hmm. conducting a full-sized orchestra mm-hmm. playing all of their hits. So it's all, oh. you, you lose that slightly synthesised sound, you get the real sound. You get a real orchestra oh. playing all their hits. Jason Donovan comes on, yeah. Donna Sunner comes on. Although I suspect is she dead? Uh, yes, yeah, she. That'll is. be tricky. Yep. That will be tricky. Oh, it still weighs around it. Hologram, get a hologram, isn't it? Hmm? Um, um, the ginger uh, liver puddling lass comes. Sonia, 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 Sonia comes on. Uh, uh, big big fun comes on. All of those guys come on. Pete Burns, Pete dead Burns, got beautiful. Well, yeah. Wouldn't that be what I'd pay? I'd pay fifteen quid to go and see that at the I'd Royal Albert. 
OK, well, you, you'll have better seats than me. <laughs> now, listen, serious story here. Bedfordshire. Uh, it, uh, Bedfordshire is panicking over, well, we call it Ebola. Some poor people call it Embola. Uh, we spoke to a dad last week, so convinced Ebola is coming for us, he won't send his daughter to school without a mask. Well, we found out that there's now a survivalist shop in the county that's run out of Ebola kits. You've been to the shop in Roxton, haven't you, Just? Yeah, I have. Um, what a strange place as well. It's the only survival shop of its kind in the whole of this country. Lincoln Miles is the owner there. And uh, here's what happened when we spoke earlier this week. At the moment, the main products we're selling out at the moment is the NBC suits. Uh, we've got the full British NBC suits and Canadian C3 gas masks. Uh, which are both work together to protect against Ebola and other sort of viruses. You've got all these boxes w- which have just arrived. As we look inside them, I can see the masks, and as soon as they've come in, they've sold out. Yeah, almost all of our supplies are sold out. Uh, we used to, we went from selling about five a week to run about 50, 60 a week. And, yeah, we, as soon as they're coming in, before they're on the shelf, they're straight out the door. Is this people abroad, people in the UK? Uh, majority of them are in the UK. We've had a couple in America, but most of them are in the UK. Seriously? Yeah. I mean, are you surprised by this? Because there haven't been any cases in this country. Does, does it surprise you you're selling out to, to people from the UK? I was surprised by the amount of people that, that were interested in it and that are getting themselves prepared. I wasn't expecting as much. Just lastly, do you think people are, are blowing this out of proportion? You're selling lots of these masks and, and these suits. We heard from a man last week who's refusing to send his daughter to school because the school have said, no, nope, you can't wear a mask. He's worried about her safety. Do you think, as a nation, we're starting to get a bit too scared now? We're blowing this out of proportion. I think it's important to keep it into perspective. At the moment, there hasn't been any cases in the UK. So things like, you know, it's perfectly safe to walk around in public. You shouldn't be scared of doing that at the moment. But it's worthwhile being prepared and having the equipment in a garage, in your bedroom, uh, just so if it does appear, then you are, you are protected if, if it does come to the UK. Gosh, mm, it's, it's worthwhile having the equipment in your garage or your bed. Well, imagine you imagine you go home on a first date mm. and someone's got a full <laughs> hazmat suit. And a ga- By the way, we have a cracking picture of you in, a, in um, a, like a gas mask type thing. Yeah. Kelly's putting it up on Facebook now. It'll be up there in the next few minutes. It really is. Um, it's a terrifying image. <laughs> but it's extraordinary how people are going out and they're buying this stuff. Yes, maybe keep it, as the guest was saying there, for, for one day in the future. But do no, we really think no. that far ahead? No, do we? we don't. And also, we don't. We don't. 08459 four double five five double five. Do people do you dear listener think this is crazy? Or do you think it actually <clears throat> it's a sensible investment? Hey Josh, you couldn't lend us a few quid, could you? Yeah, what are you after? Uh twenty would be nice. Yeah, yeah, why? I'm just imagining you're a bit flush at the moment. Uh, well, why's that? Well I was I was listening to uh, Five Live last night, National Radio Station, isn't it? Yeah, yeah. And I heard this. Okay. All right, Rotimi Amici, thank you very much indeed. Thanks for the insight. It's just coming up to five to five. Parents at a primary school in Bedfordshire are angry with the head teacher after finding out that she's taking time off during term time. Jenny Winder, who's the head of Elstow School in Bedford, booked a week of leave in January, just after the end of the Christmas holiday. Parents aren't happy because they face a £60 fine if they take their children out of school without permission during term time. Our reporter Justin Dealey spoke to Jenny Winder outside the school. Jenny, I'm just asking you one question. Our reporter, Justin Dealey. Mm, Let me mm. just make sure I got that right. Our reporter, Justin Dealey, spoke to Jenny Winder outside the school. Jenny, I'm just asking you one question. Yeah, that's right. Moonlighting on National Radio Station, mate. Uh, yeah. I'm also working for the uh, T-Doc in a couple of weeks' time at uh, his uh, Big Children in Need event, uh, the backstage reporter with uh, a number of uh, soul guests. Yeah. Sorry. You got time to... I mean, are you, are you like, can you stick around for the rest of the morning and do the show? Have you got time uh, for that? <sighs> Speak to me, Agent. I've got one thing to say to you. Mm. Giza! Travel news for beds, cards and bugs. BBC Three Counties Radio. Starting off at this morning on the Great North Road. Do expect delays there just around the Black Cat roundabout as those roadworks are continuing there. Taking a look in Luton, water main work continues on Dunstable Road, just around Maidenhall Road. So do expect some delays there as well. Already looking quite heavy on the M25, heading anti clockwise between Junction 21 for the M1 and Junction 20 at Kings Langley. So far, looking at the departure boards for the trains, and it seems to be running rather well across the three counties. Nicola Richards, BBC Three Counties. Radio. Across beds, hearts and bugs. This is BBC Three Counties Radio.
It's 6.30, I'm Simon Oxley. Milton Keynes Council has objected to government plans to cut red tape in the taxi industry, but last night the House of Lords said controversial parts of the deregulation bill could go ahead. The government's been criticised for failing to make enough progress on deporting foreign criminals, and a Bedfordshire-based company says it's struggling to meet demand for Ebola survival equipment. Three Counties Sports. BBC Three Counties Radio. Watford are down to second in the championship after being held two all at home by Nottingham Forest. Odion Igalo and Amatej Vidra penalty had twice put the Hornets in front. Here's head coach Slavisa Jukanovic. We made uh, many brilliant action. We made many, many chances. Our last half hour, we lost our order, tactically order. I am not happy with the last uh, half hour, but really I am very happy with the uh, first hour. I can be happy with the result because what we always want to do, win the game, but I am not disappointed. Milton Keynes Dons are up to fourth in League One after coming from behind to beat Fleetwood 2 1 at Stadium MK. Carl McFadden and a late penalty from Benica Phoebe gave Carl Robinson's side the points. I thought the boys tonight were magnificent. Honestly, I really, really do. I'm so, so proud. I said them at half time at 0 0. These are nights, these are special nights. These are nights to determine who you are as an individual. And we've not been able to stand up and be counted over, over recent years in these evenings. I think we certainly have done today against a very, very good side as well because they're a good team. Wickham stay top of League Two despite losing 2 1 at Exeter and after taking an early lead through Peter Murphy. Luton a third and just a point behind Wickham after a Mark Cullen hat trick gave John Still's side a 3 1 win over Dagenham at Kenilworth Road. You know, you've got to win in all conditions on all days and against all opposition. And, you know, the games are tough every week. Um, and to, to have done that, I'm, obviously, I'm, I'm, I'm delighted. But Stevenage lost 3-2 at Portsmouth, despite goals from Dean Wells and Chris Beardsley. Here's manager Graham Westley. I thought under all the circumstances, we put in a really good shift, played intelligently, um, played with some really good quality at times, um, scored two terrific goals. Another set piece that they've, they've managed to put in the back of the net, which was good. And if you look at the errors we've made, the, the moments that have cost us, they're all curable and avoidable. And in the Champions League, Chelsea thrashed Maribor 6-0, but Manchester City let slip a 2-0 lead to draw 2 all against CSKA in Moscow. Tonight it's Liverpool versus Real Madrid and Arsenal away to Anderlecht. BBC Three Counties News and Sport. The next full bulletin is at 7. If you hear a whisper, give us a shout. Ian Lee. BBC Three Counties Radio. I have been told uh, by management I have to play this. Across beds, hearts and bucks. This is Catherine Boyle. Yeah. BBC Three Counties Radio. Recognise. <laughs> 08459 455 555. If anybody's got spare wheelchair ticket for Neil Diamond and wants to take my mum. I mean, she's nice enough. She didn't have to go on a bit, though. Does she? Yeah, she's a talker. But she likes Neil Diamond, so she'll probably be quiet when he's singing. She won't. Oh? I've been before. Oh. Um, Okay, so there's a football player, Raheem Sterling. Yes. Uh, Apparently he's been too tired to play football. I don't get this thing, right, about football players are too tired to play football. It's 90 minutes with a break in the middle. Quite a lot of running up and down, though. Oh, for... for, Yeah, but some people work 12, 13, 14 hours a day. They're not too tired to go in and and pack stuff in a factory or go and do stuff, right? And, And then they go... Oh, yeah, we can't play more than one game a week because oh, I'll be, I'll be really tired. You can't play more than one... It, a, the two words, play game. It's a play, You're playing a game, so it's not even... It's not like, oh, I, I, can't, I can't work two jobs a week. It's playing a game, mm. right? So go and play the game, and you're being paid, what, 50 grand, 100 grand, 200 grand a week? You think you could summon up a I little could, bit of energy. I could play two football matches for 100 grand a week. I could do it. Rubbish, but yep. I mean, you would be there anyway. Raheem Sterling, um, he's been, I don't know the gentleman, he's been too tired to, to play football. Too tired to play football. <laughs> so, on Sunday night, uh, the head of England, the Roy man, said that uh, Raheem's Pardon? too Roy man, Roy man reveals that Raheem's too tired to start for England. Monday night, Raheem is at a star party with dwarves, bearded lady, snake. And Ox. Raheem. Raheem. Club has told yesterday how Raheem Sterling stood on his chair and danced at a nightclub 24 hours after being too tired and jaded to play for him. I'm jaded about this bloody job every single day, and yet I, I'm tired. And yet I still turn up, and you do not ever hear me whinge. <laughs> 
The Winger 19 parties until 3 a.m. at the Cirque Le Soir Club with fellow. Is the what? The Cirque Le Soir. Is that the circus of the night? Of the evening? <sighs> yeah, I guess. Um, the previous evening, he'd been left out of the starting lineup for England. Cirque England's- Le Soir. Cirque Le Soir. Sure, it should be Cirque de Soir. <laughs> Mate! Or du Soir. They're a circus. They're too busy having fun and doing acrobatics. Care about grammar. And fair play, their car probably broke down on the way there. It's a clown joke. <laughs> the previous... <laughs> you don't want to see what she squashed to get that noise. <laughs> the previous evening, he'd been left out of the starting lineup for England's Euro 26 quali- 2016 qualifier, with manager Roy Mann Hodgson saying he was suffering from fatigue. Oh, he's got fatigue. Oh, no, that's Janet Street Porter. Not allowed to take the mick out of anyone's voices anymore. Flippin' heck! But fellow clubbers saw few signs of tiredness as Liverpool Sterling enjoyed the antics of the dwarves, snakes and bearded ladies that make up the entertainment at, she's going to hate me, Cirque Le Soir. No. No. Um, a woman said the DJ even kept shouting... Hang on a minute, let's do this. Uh... Go on, do it. Do it in Dealey's voice, because he's a DJ. The woman said, uh, the DJ even kept shouting, Big up my boy Rahima! <laughs> We've got the Arsenal boys in the house! Rahim looked very relaxed, like he didn't have a care in the world. He was partying with the dwarves, snakes and fire breathers until 3am. He was partying with the snakes? How does a snake party? <laughs> I, don't... <laughs> I, don't... <laughs> I don't know. Let's ask Kelly Betts. Kelly, how does a snake party? Like this. Yep, fair play. She's been, she's been she's to been, the circle she's been. Le Soir. 08459 four double five five double five. Right, here's another one. Ex-servicemen and women at a Royal British Legion club are facing their toughest battle yet. Yeah. It's not the toughest battle. Oh. They went in a battle where they got shot at. Yeah. This is about being stopped from swearing. Oh, for... Veterans have been told that they could be barred from the premises if caught uttering expletives over a pint. Oh, Club Secretary David Roberts is so fed up with bad language at the club in Maystake, North oh. Bridge End, South Wales, that he's put up signs warning from now on anyone swearing, especially out loud. What? Well, well, so hang on it's a not swearing if it's not out loud. Well, hang it? on. It, it, let me just try. Oh, you filthy. Yeah, yeah. We'll be given a caution, followed by a warning for continuation, then finally be asked to leave the premises. Three, three swears and you're out. I just want to check this actually happened. Our reporter, Justin Dealey. Yeah, it did, yeah. didn't it? It did, OK. Um, uh, yeah, oh, for goodness sakes. They want to maintain standards. There's... I think the pub should be the place where you can let rip with a few... Words. Not just let rip. <laughs> that would be horrible. <laughs> oh, I wouldn't want to go swear in there. Words. The, you're right, you should be allowed to swear. A, if you've, um, you're an old boy that was in the military... Or old girl who's in the military. Well, I don't know. Oh, I know a few. I know, but I don't, it's like, it's like um, Scoyne's talking about female taxi drivers. I've never seen one. Did they, did they really exist? Um, yes, and they can snap your neck. What, female taxi drivers? They better not. No. This is why we need the checks in place. Oh, for heaven's sake. 08459 Who'd have thought a, a serial killer could actually be funny? What? Oh, not that Brazilian one. Yeah. He's not funny. Well, he's not funny, but he says... Um, killer of 39, Tiago Enrique Gomez de Rocha. Da Rocha. Can I murder inmates? Now, I just. The serial killer who uh, murdered 39 people uh, has asked jail guards if it's okay to murder prisoners. Now, there will be some people listening who'll go, yeah. Saves us the money. Well, it doesn't save us any money because it's, it's in a foreign prison. There'll be some people going, yeah, OK, yeah, so what? They're in prison. They knew the risks. They shouldn't have broken the law. You should be slightly more worried because he's not picking on girls anymore. He's in there with that pretty face. He's in there with that pretty, pretty face. Ed Sheeran, no thanks. Little Rotters, here we go. This, and I... Kids to get lessons on brushing teeth. Mm-hmm. Primary schools are being urged... Oh, ah, so already we've seen a hole in the story. The, ki- the kids won't necessarily get these lessons. They're being urged. Mm-hmm to introduce daily teeth brushing sessions because kids are not doing it at home. The move is aimed at reducing the 25,000 youngsters in year treated in hospital for dental problems. Kids as young as three are suffering with severe decay because of high sugar levels in their diet. I don't see a problem with that. What's, what, were they no, lose... it just means some kids will brush their teeth four times. Yeah, which, which, is, which is great. 
Uh, and t- to be honest, here's the thing. I don't know how to brush my teeth anymore because I don't know what... The- it changes every mm. few years, doesn't it? Is it round and round or up and down these days? I was told round and round, mm. and then a few years, several years later, I was told up and down. It's not that anymore. It's something different. Oh, for heaven's sake, just brush your teeth. So I don't see. A pr- it's, I don't think this is nanny state. I don't see a problem with kids having brushing teeth lessons in, or teeth brushing lessons, as I'd like to call them. You're right. You, you gag in there. Well, there's a picture of a dog with its ears ha- hanging Pro- off. Probably time to have one of these then. Yeah, go on. Justin Davis.
Travel news for beds, cards and bugs. BBC Three Counties Radio. Well, starting off this morning in Milton Keynes, do expect delays on standing wet Newport Road, seeing delays there due to roadworks that are taking place. The M25 heading anti-clockwise already looking quite heavy on the sensors at the moment between Junction 21 for the M1 and Junction 20 at Kings Langley. Also building up anti-clockwise between Junction 17 for Maple Cross and Junction 16, the M40. Taking a look so far at the departure boards for the trains and so far everything's running well across the three counties. Nicola Richards, BBC Three Counties. Radio. Right, it's 6.45. It is Wednesday, the 22nd of October. I'm Ian Lee. These are your headlines on BBC Three Counties Radio. Milton Keynes Council has objected to... (laughs) Catherine and I are trying to... There's a picture, there's a mucky picture on page 40... uh, No, page 20 and 21 of The Sun... The bo- bodies are involved, and we're trying to work out exactly what's going on in that picture. It's like, where's Wally? But, but, but. I think we know where Wally is. <laughs> where's, what's everyone else doing? <laughs> where's Willie? We know. Oh, let's. Oh, I can't. Let's just have the weather. Beds, hearts and bucks weather. BBC Three Counties Radio. Good morning. It's a different day to yesterday. It's certainly a chillier start. Temperatures overnight drop down into single figures, ranging between 6 and 7 Celsius across all three counties at the moment as we had some clear skies. The wind has fallen a little lighter as well. Still breezy out there today, just less windy, less fierce as yesterday. Thanks to the clearing skies, though, it is a bright start. Some sunshine first thing. Cloud increasing through the day, turning that a little hazy later on. On. The maximum temperature 13 Celsius. Overnight tonight, the cloud continues to thicken. We could get the odd spot of light rain and drizzle as a result of that. But the wind starts to pick up from the southwest. The air coming from the Atlantic means it is going to be a little milder. The minimum down to around 10, perhaps in the rural spots at 9. But it is going to be a warmer night than the one we've just had. For tomorrow morning, rather grey and cloudy. One or two outbreaks of rain, but predominantly dry. We're looking at a maximum temperature tomorrow of around 15 Celsius. And that's your forecast. Every weekday morning, local opinions. Well, I think it's a very difficult uh, proposition. You really cannot l- allow your heart to rule your head. Local stories. I wanted to call my house Hardcore Mansions. They refused that on two separate occasions. I wasn't leaving the house through the fear as to what I would find when I came back. Local life. I bought a car within three months. It's rusty. They said that the deposit would be forthcoming. It wasn't. The JVS Show, weekdays from nine on BBC Three Counties Radio. On FM, AM, online and digital radio. This is Catherine Boyle on BBC Three Counties Radio. My music with Kelly Betts on BBC Three Counties Radio. My music on BBC Three Counties Radio. Why does she sound so surprised? Well, we're all surprised. She's wondering what her music's doing with you. (laughs) I've stolen it. Look at this. A priest has become so offended. Sorry? A priest has become so offended by his female parishioner's skimpy outfits... That's easy for you to say. ..he has issued photo guidelines on the length of skirt to wear in church. Good. Good. The dress code notice with two points of what to wear and what not was put up uh, by the priest outside his church at Jessico in Sardinia. The first photo shows a woman in a T-shirt and knee-length skirt resting just above the knee. The second shows a woman wearing a short t- top and mini skirt. She's marked through with a black cross. This is no! Sardinia? Yeah. Good. Whenever we, If you go to um, uh, any of the churches in Greece, they give you, a shawl, they give you a shawl to cover up with. Yeah. If you go to a mosque, you've got to cover up. Brilliant, be, perfect. Be respectful. You're in the house of God. Do you know what I've seen, though? It all goes to pot with weddings, doesn't it? Oh, they all dress like complete and utter well, slappers. Well, I mean, some of them. I mean, those wedding dresses where you can't move without your top, like, falling out of your top, that shouldn't be allowed. Well, it's like... It's be like, demure. I mean, look. Uh, well, I can't bother. What are you going to show me? Some illustrations of what not to wear. I was going to show you a uh, picture of some boobs. Yeah, <laughs> um, it is though. You, when you go to church, you're in the house of God, right? Bit Plus, of if you're going to a Catholic church, you're w- around a priest. You can't. So stop flashing. I when we uh, went, it's almost like bullying. We went to India, India, um, and um, there were some Italian. I think they were Italian, maybe French. 
they were foreign anyway. I think they were Italian. Maybe French. They were certainly foreign. I think they were Italian. Maybe French? Could be. They were definitely foreign. A uh, couple. Young couple. Where were they from? I'm not sure. It may have been in Italy or France. Definitely somewhere foreign. OK. And um, they, were, they were going to look at... Um, I don't know. Because what, what, what they were on the holidays from... Italy or France. Yeah. Definitely from somewhere foreign. And it, they were going like to like a temple or a shrine. That, I don't know. Not Spain. They wouldn't be... No, no, they weren't Spanish. They were definitely. Italian. Oh. French? Mm. Anyway, they were, they were foreign, Justin. Mm, OK. And we're going up to look at a shrine or a temple, wherever it is they have an injury. I don't remember. They all look the same. It was hot. And you got to dress respectfully. You got to have, you, you got to wear long trousers, even though it's hot. That's fair enough. I do yeah, that. And, yeah. and this woman, right? She had a, sh- a mini skirt on, and a t-shirt with a picture of a woman with no top on, <laughs> with her boobs out. I bet you liked it, though. Sorry. I bet you liked it. So she. Well, where, where was this woman from? Italy, I think. Could have been French, actually. Hmm. I did like it, just Exactly. But even I thought, flipping it, she's going to ride an elephant up to a temple or a shrine. How on earth are you going to manage in that? Well, it was dis- I thought it was in- completely inappropriate, Justin. Well, the thing is, we-, we were born naked, weren't we? Sorry? We were born naked. Um... Yes, fact, not fiction. Well, uh, yeah, that's fact. I just yeah, but do we have to stay that way, then? No, we don't have to stay that way. We're also but, covered um, in all sorts. We, we cover ourselves in all sorts. Yeah, do you want me to cover myself in poo no, and uh, placenta? No, no, but I'm just saying afterbirth. that... Afterbirth. Uh, do you want me to get some afterbirth, <laughs> Justin, and smear it all over you? <laughs> to her, th- that may have been the latest fashion, the, the, the way that she was dressed, yeah, but and she's she thought a, there was nothing wrong with that. Yeah, but she's a ninja. She's going to a temple. Be respectful. She was covered up. Well, the, let's you, just say the main parts were covered up. You're not in Italy and or France now. Mm. You're certainly not somewhere foreign. Hey, what's going on with Renny? Is it Zellweger or Zellweger? Zellweger. What's going on with Renny Zellweger? I think she's had her uh, peepers opened. But it doesn't even look like Renny Zellweger. No, it looks like uh, Sarah Jessica Parker now. Slightly less horsey. Yeah. <laughs> but you know what I mean. There's a look. Oh, hang on a second, just. D- uh, Smiler. Morning. Morning, boss. What you got for us? Well, I just want to um, ask why people need to wrap up when they go to the God's house. Well, it's respectful. No, not at all. Um, when God made us, he made us with bits, bobs and boobies. Yeah. And he made us naked. He did not what put clothes on Adam and Eve, did he? Mm. We, we were allowed to go forth in uh, our birthday suits. And we, as humans, decided to put clothes well, on. No, let's remember exactly what happened. It was Eve and that apple, wasn't it? And then we discovered that we were ashamed without having the clothes on. So it's our own fault. Cover up. Exactly. Yeah. What we should you... all go naked. It's natural. You want to go it's naked in will. a church? You're going to get such a cold bum on those pews. <laughs> Daily, uh, this no, is the... I... Dealey, this is the kind of this is the kind of sexual deviant you encourage to call. Absolutely, yeah. I'm not denying that for one second. <laughs> Smiler, thank you very much indeed. Great call. My favourite line I heard. You know um, uh, 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 those. Uh, 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 um, Hang on. You know those extreme Christians who yeah. don't like homosexuals. Like a fundamentalist. Yeah. God made Adam and Eve, not Adam and Steve. I'm sure, we'd all agree with that. Mm. Then so I saw a great comeback, and I, I wish I knew who said it. Yes. Uh, God also made uh, Homo sapiens, not hetero sapiens, <laughs> which I thought was a nice little comeback. Mm. In your face, not you know if that's your thing. Yeah. Uh, right. No, you can't. I, I don't get nudity. I don't like it. But but then again, you know, you might not get other things in life. For, for no, those, I don't. For, that's for, the problem. For, I'm never for, nude. For for those people that, <laughs> that that like being nude, it's their thing. It's no. what they do. They probably can't understand why you wear clothes. Well, I would say what? many many years people ago. People can under, people can understand. <laughs> He's about to do an historical fact. I'm looking <laughs> forward to that. Cause, mostly because it's cold. Saying. We live in England. People understand why we wear clothes because yeah. you don't want to go in Tesco mm. and uh, lean over the frozen section and you know okay. it'd be awful. Very brief story. Story here for you. Okay. Many, many, many years ago, yeah. uh, when I was working on the early breakfast show, we had uh, nudists in the studio, Disgusting. and it was the first time that uh, they had ever sat in a studio. The first time on UK radio on these they, on these chairs. Oh, yeah, on they those chairs. They brought towels. Tell yeah. me, they brought towels. Uh, no, no, <gasps> c- completely natural. What they did, they did an interview between seven and seven thirty, fully oh. closed, and then we went into the news. Yeah. Between seven thirty and eight, uh, they took their clothes off, oh. sat in the studio 
naked and conducted an interview. Those people between 7.30 and 8 were different people, completely yeah, different perverts. personalities because they were in their natural environment to them. I just, th- I just think it's wrong. The thing is, right, there's a thing in the, one of the papers about swingers, right? Mm. Swingers and nudists, they're all, let's be honest, they're all really unattractive. You don't get hot swingers and you don't get hot nudists. You're probably going to the wrong places, though. Well, where are you going? Well, I'm just, I'm just saying that there would be certain places where, where nudists would go where, where I'm sure you would find some no. attractive ones. No, the only people who are offering it up are people who won't get it looked at otherwise. <laughs> Justin, I've got nothing for you, to be honest. Let's take it to the streets. All right, then. Well, I got to... <laughs> How dedicated to this story are you? I think well, what you're referring to is should people have respect in churches? People that go to churches all yep. the time, uh, what, what some of the uh, the weirdest and, and disgusting things they've seen inside a church? Do people respect the church nowadays in the year 2014? So if, if Justin approaches you, uh, it, it's just a microphone he's, uh, he's shoving in your face. I wait for five. Five nine four double five five double five. I've been trying to do it right. I've been living a lonely life. I've been sleeping here instead. I've been sleeping in my bed. Sleeping in my bed. So show me family All the blood that I will bleed Into that song. Oh wait, four five nine four double five five. It makes sense if you're going to go to a church. Don't dress like a slapper or a plum. Cover yourself up. Some of these weddings. I mean, you're you're northern, Catherine. So you've probably seen them far worse than oh, I've ever seen. Oh, the christenings. Seen. They're christenings. Well, they just dress like like they're prostitutes. Well, they're dressing for the party afterwards. I like weddings when people walk in with a can of lager. I've never went to the church. <laughs> right. Yeah. I've never seen that. So you're northern. It, you're quite common. I'm so glad I'm posh. Travel news for beds, cards and bugs. BBC Three Counties Radio. Starting on the M1 heading southbound, already looking quite heavy on the speed sensors this morning. Between Junction 11 at Dunstable Road and Junction 10 for Luton Airport Spur Road. Taking a look at Standing Way Milton Keynes building a little bit at Newport Road as those roadworks are continuing. And so far on the M25 heading anti clockwise, it's looking very heavy just between Junction 21 for the M1 and Junction 20 at Kings at Langley. In Boreham Wood, it is already queuing on the Barnet Bypass between Stirling Corner and Mill Hill Circus. Nicola Richards, BBC Three Counties Radio. Thank you very much indeed. Ah, dear. Busy show. So, reggae is rubbish. 
Nudists and swingers are perverts. And come on, dress respectfully for God. Local and vocal across beds, hearts and bucks. This is BBC Three Counties Radio. It's seven o'clock, I'm Simon Oxley. The headlines, Milton Keynes Council opposes government taxi plans, foreign criminals not being deported and wins for MK Dons and Luton. BBC Three Counties Radio. Milton Keynes Council has objected to government plans to cut red tape in the taxi industry. It follows months of controversy, which included a convicted rapist getting a taxi licence, which led to the resignation of the mayor. But last night, the House of Lords said controversial parts of the deregulation bill could go ahead. More from our political... Political reporter Paul Scoynes. Under the bill, it would be possible for a firm to pass on your booking to another company from outside the area, which may not have had the same checks. It also means drivers' criminal checks could be made every three years rather than the current annual arrangements. Campaigners and the council say that changes, which are still to go before Parliament for the final time, could put lives at risk. The government's been criticised for failing to make enough progress on deporting foreign criminals. The National Audit Office found there were almost 11,000 prisoners from overseas here in June, more than in 2006 when new measures were introduced. Louise Bladen is a director at the National Audit Office. There are currently about 4,200 foreign national offenders who've been released from prison pending deportation. So they're, they're foreign national offenders living in the community. And of that number, we found that 760 had absconded, so the Home Office doesn't know where they are. The World Health Organisation says treatments to tackle the Ebola outbreak in West Africa could become available within a few weeks and a vaccine could be ready by January. Meanwhile, a Bedfordshire-based company is struggling to meet demand for Ebola survival equipment. Preppers in Roxton now has an entire range devoted to emergency Ebola supplies. Owner Lincoln Miles says orders have soared. Almost all of our supplies are sold out. We went from selling about five a week to run about 50, 60 a week. As soon as they're coming in, before they're on the shelf, they're straight out the door. The majority of them are in the UK. We've had a couple in America. I was surprised by the amount of people that that were interested in it and that are getting themselves prepared. I wasn't expecting as much. Police are appealing for witnesses after around £20 worth of coins were stolen from a charity wishing well in St Albans. The well belonging to the Hearts and Middlesex Wildlife Trust in Verulamium Park was raided early this month by thieves who cut off a padlock and a metal grill. GPs in England are to be paid £55 every time they diagnose a case of dementia. Health chiefs say the payments are intended to increase the number of people who receive treatment. In sport, Watford are down to second in the championship after being held two all at home by Nottingham Forest. MK Dons moved up to fourth in League One after a 2 1 win at home to Fleetwood. Benek Afobi against Maxwell, right footed, Afobi shoots and scores, and MK Dons take the lead at Stadium MK. Wickham stay top of League Two despite losing 2 1 at Exeter. Luton a third, just a point behind Wickham after a Mark Cullen hat trick gave them a 3 1 win over Dagenham at Kenilworth Road, but Stevenage lost. 3-2 at Portsmouth. The weather, a dry, sunny but chilly start. Cloud increasing through the day, but most parts will stay dry. A maximum temperature today, 13 degrees Celsius. And you can get the latest news and sport online at bbc.co.uk slash three counties. BBC Three Counties Radio's big tour of beds, hearts and bucks. It's a super village. It's got all the amenities. Telling everyone about where you live. It's a nice atmosphere, people walking the dogs. In snow, in sunshine. Shine in a beautiful sunset. All this week, we're uncovering Barton Le Clay. I wouldn't leave it. If you paid me millions, I still wouldn't leave. I love it here. The big tour of beds, hearts, and bucks. BBC Three Counties Radio. Hang on, hang on, hang on. Who's paying people millions to move away? To just I'm I'm I will speak to them. Why are they paying millions for people to... I don't... I, 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 what's their... Just give me their number. Morning, this is Ian Lee, BBC Three Counties Radio. Lots to talk about on the show this morning. Catherine Boyle, what have we got on the show this morning? Uh, taxis. Yep. Uh, Ebola kits. Yep. And wish thieves. 
Oh, yeah, the wish thieves. The wish thieves. The wish thieves. The wish Imagine thieves. stealing a wish. Also, new distance swingers are deviants. Why would anyone do it? I don't even... I'm not even nude for more... I'm not nude for more than 30 seconds a day. So that's not you that was leaked from the cloud? Oh, yay. There was nothing leaking from my cloud. My, my cloud works as, as good as it's ever done. 08459 four double five five double five. Across beds, oh. hearts and bucks. This is BBC Three Counties Radio. There's also the cover-up for God's sake phone in. 08459 four double five five double five. I don't see a problem when when you go to... Um, Church. You should... Uh, Temple. You should uh, cover oh. yourself up. It's a bit of respect. Trouble is, some people just use it as a venue, don't they? And really, they're just thinking about the party afterwards. So they dress as if they're going to a nightclub. Oh, eight four five nine four double five five double five is the telephone number. This is a Sardinian priest who is uh, giving do's and don'ts of uh, fashion advice to people going to his church. He doesn't want to see any more thigh. Thank you very much. Well, yeah, uh, yeah, I, I agree with that. I concur. When you go to church bo- abroad, you get to when we go to, to church in Greece. There's a ch- nice church. We go and have a look around. As you can see a, 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 a dead man's hand. You can yes. actually see the dead man's I've hand. I've seen that. Yeah, they yeah. put a baby in as well, didn't they? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Did they did that when you were there. Uh, it's like a cat flap. You can put yeah. your baby in yeah. so you can have a... Oh, yeah, get blessed. My, my boys yeah. didn't want to have anything to do with that. Good oh, for them. horrible. Yeah, I, I, actually, I didn't want my boys to have anything to do with it. It, it, it was being mooted, and I said, um, I don't think so, guys. You get blessed by the dead man's hand. Flipping that is weird, isn't it? I mean, religion is bonkers, isn't it, mm. if you look at it logically. But uh, if we go in there, you've got to put a shawl over you, and if you're, skirt, you're wearing shorts, you ain't going in, I'm afraid. Perfect. It's church, isn't it? It's fair enough. Fair enough, fair enough, isn't it? 08459 four double five five double five. Now, Milton Keynes Council is hitting out at government plans to deregulate the taxi industry. The local authority has been trying to tighten up procedure following the revelation that its licensing committee allowed a serial rapist to take fares. Well, meanwhile, last night, the House of Lords voted in favour of a bill which would allow companies to sell your booking on to whomever they wished. The move has also caught the attention of the Susie Lamplute Trust. Its director is Rachel Griffin. Morning, Rachel. Oh, Rachel, are you there? Yes, Are you on that one now? I do apologise. Sorry, my my fat fingers had the wrong fader. What what, uh, what, what were the problems with this bill? Well, I mean, the first thing to say is we're really pleased that one of the clauses from this bill has been dropped by the government, um, and that's real progress. That was the one that would have allowed any individual to drive a licensed minicab when it was off duty. Um, And our concern about that was that um, somebody could get into a minicab thinking it was being uh, driven by a safe and vetted driver and actually it could have been uh, driven by any member of the public. So that's really good. Um, The second two clauses, however, that remain, um, we are still concerned about. Um, Subcontracting is fine in principle. and We know that one of the reasons why people often take unsafe unsafe methods of transport is because there isn't enough supply. So to be able to subcontract to another supplier could uh, address that issue. However, um, we think that uh, it's really important that um, our licensing officers have enforcement powers over vehicles outside their jurisdiction. At mm. the moment, um, as, a, as the bill stands, they don't. I don't get the selling on your booking tool. Because if, if I phone a cab company, maybe I've, I've, I've misunderstood this. If I phone a cab company and they say, yeah, we've got nothing for 45 minutes, I'll then just go through the list in the phone book or on, on my phone and, and, uh, until I get one that can do it sooner. Yeah, and, and I think, you know, a lot of us would do that, but I think also it's worth bearing in mind that one of the reasons why people want to get a minicab and they want it quickly is because they're cold, they're tired, it's the end of the yep. night out, and actually how realistic is it to expect us to, to, to have to do that? Um, and you know, I know that the arguments have been made, that, for example, that disabled passengers can find it quite difficult to find a, a vehicle that's got um, proper disabled access. So, as I say, in principle, subcontracting could be really helpful, mm. but the right safeguards do need to be in place. We have seen a variety of problems after... The- this whole uh, case of the cabs in Milton Keynes. What, what do you think needs to be done about taxi licensing, Rachel? What, what, where should we be going with this? I think we should be going for complete standardisation across the country. Um, I know that, um, um, that what the, the Milton Keynes case has highlighted is that licensing authorities still seem to have an awful lot of discretion as to how they apply some of these, ba- some of these basic common sense rules. I don't think it should matter whether Milton Keynes has licensed the, the, the minicab driver or Bedfordshire has licensed the minicab driver. I want to know that they're all applying a, a standard um, and a consistent um, level of, of safety. And tests. that's one of the problems. 
problems, isn't it? Because it, it seems to be uh, quite random from borough to borough. You, there, there are, I know we've mentioned this before on this show. There are very strict uh, um, laid out rules in places like Leeds, but yeah. then Milton Keynes, it's all a bit, well, you know, it's a bit vague. Yeah, and I think oh, I think um, councils like Leeds are really are the ones getting it right. Um, I think the thing we have to remember, and I think I might have said this on your show before, is that when we get into a minicab, whoever we are, once the door is shut, we are very vulnerable. Mm. We're in the hands of that driver. We have to be able to trust them. Um, and actually, we just can't afford to be taking chances with personal safety. Rachel, it's a very simple message that uh, it, some, some people are still struggling to get. Uh, thank you very much indeed. Always a pleasure, Rachel Griffin. Um, the director of the Susie Lamplew Trust. Across beds, hearts and bucks. This is Ian Lee. BBC Three Counties Radio. Morning, Mark. Morning, Ian. What you got for us, boss? Yeah, it's about this being able to still contract taxi booking. Yes. In the area that I live in, there's actually two companies that I won't use because the driver's regularly overcharging customers. Oh. And I don't think it's right now. They're over, like, uh, overcharging customers? Yeah, the, the situation was, um, about four years ago, I was working as a receptionist in a hotel. Yeah. And there was a problem with the kitchen. So, as a gesture of goodwill, our company had decided that we was going to pay for taxes to uh, take guests who want to eat to an alternative uh, nearby site owned by the company. Well, that's very generous of you. Yeah, good work. Well done. Yeah, uh, so, so when we we, um, we had to get receipts, obviously, to balance the, um, the shortfall in the hotel for that night. And... Literally, not one of the fares was the same. <laughs> I'm, la- I'm laughing, but I, that's, that, that is terrible. Yeah, I mean, there was actually, to go, to go a very short distance, there was a the £1.50 variance in the fares. Is it, did you not get quotes? For, was these all these cabs from the same company? Well, no, because we were having to work right. one at a time, one right. at a time, the, the gas came up, went to the, into the driving restaurant and... I what always, always, always get a quote before. If, if you're phoning up a minicab, I always get a quote. How much is it going to cost to go from here to the airport? Oh, that'll be fifteen quid. And I've had the fella in the cab say, "Oh, that's that's nineteen pounds." Uh, no, sorry, mate. The guy told me, f- "Yeah, well, it took a little bit longer." Well, that's tough. I was told fifteen quid, and now you're trying to diddle me. You're not getting a tip either. Now, the problem that we had was that we were actually having to tell the guests to keep the receipt, right? And then, and then on their return, yeah. Well, Mark, listen, thank you. it's not the best line, so I'm going to let you go. Thank you very much indeed. I don't get... There's so many things about cabs I don't get. Have you ever had the thing where the cab driver pulls in to get petrol when you're in the back of the cab? Have you ever had that? No, that would terrify me. Oh, it's happened to me before, and so what I have done is I've played on their CB radio. <laughs> what? Uh, I've played you know, the, 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 I've played on the CB and uh, uh, pretended I'm uh, a cab <laughs> and I'm ready to take fares, and I talk to the fella, I do that, pull in for petrol. I don't One get time, that. Um, a taxi driver went and picked up his mate and then dropped him on the route to where we were going. He got out and then we carried on. That, that wow. would rattle me as well. Yeah. He was but, like, do you mind if I pick up my mate? I was like, nah. Yeah, fine. you should have said, yeah, do you, do you mind if I don't pay? Cause you, I'm another assuming, time. Did his mate pay? <laughs> no, another time, um, my taxi driver ran out of petrol and broke down. Oh. So I had to walk the rest of the way. I, I, had, a, yeah, I had a taxi driver that got, got a puncture because he was driving badly, smashed into the kerb. Uh, and um, uh, he, he wanted to charge me for the journey. I think I may have ended up paying, to be honest, because was, I, I was just like so flummoxed. But I don't get... Um, black cab drivers in London, been in London a lot recently. I was in Oxford Street yesterday. Oh. Gosh, it's hellish, isn't it? Mm. It's in the Disney store. Oy. Um, but black cab drivers, who supposedly have the knowledge, they've all got sat-navs now. Black cab drivers. So anyone could be a black cab driver, it turns out. you just got to get a Tom-Tom. Or a Garmin. Those are the only two companies I think that make satellite navigational systems. And also... Here's another thing. I don't get the, the, the I don't get the tipping of the cab driver. What, what, what's, tell me what, what's the price? It's twelve pound fifty. Here's twelve pound fifty. What? I, did, Sometimes if it's nine pound, I'll just give them ten. Yeah. Oh, well, Easier. I, well, I can't bother to wait for him to get in into his pocket and pull out the pound. Well, no, I've done that thing where you give them a tenner for ni- for a nine quid journey, and they're like. They don't, they don't, they're not even making the effort to give you the change. Rude. And of course, they should at least pretend. Of course, I tip cab drivers, but why am I tipping cab drivers? Why? They're... I tip them for not being weird and being threatening. So you, you, you tip them basically because you've not been sexually attacked? Yeah, relief. You can't give money to men that don't sexually attack you. I do. Well, in that case, you owe me a fortune. I probably have to give you some of that back. Yeah, fair play. But 
Oh wait, four five nine four double five five double five. If I'm in a cab, t- what's the price? It's twelve pound fifty. Is it right? I'll pay twelve pound fifty, and I'd like a receipt. Oh, we don't do receipts. Yes, you do. Otherwise, you ain't get my money. Hate it. In Japan, you don't you don't tip them. They've got um, uh, they wear white gloves, they wear caps, and you don't tip them. They tell you what the, the fare is, and They'd you pay. They'd be embarrassed, that. wouldn't they? You don't tip generally in Japan, do you? No, you don't. If you leave money on a table in a restaurant in it's Japan, in- they run out after you and give it back to it's you. It's insulting. Yeah. yeah. It's great. It's great. Yeah. Let's get rid of the whole tipping system. Let's put the prices up ever so slightly and get rid of a tipping system. Oh, I don't know. Why? I once... Oh. Pay, I once pay the stuff. with a boyfriend quite badly because he was uh, determined that he shouldn't tip anybody and I just thought, oh, I what tip. a complete... Yeah. And he was. I do tip, as you saw uh, uh, when we were in a very swanky restaurant the other day. I tipped. Yes. Uh, up in Salford, I tipped, and I do tip. But let's pay the staff more and get rid of the tipping because it's it's embarrassing, it's awkward, it's confusing. It ruins it ruins uh, the meal for me a lot of times because I'm thinking, oh, God, how much is this? So hang on, this has cost twenty. That's thirty. Oh, how much? What's the tip? What's the tip? Just tell me what the total is, and I'll pay that. Do you tip your hairdresser? No, I do not. Oh, I do I not. Do. No. I always give her an extra fiver. What for? Uh, Tell me the price. Not messing my hair up. No. Hang geez. on, there's a pattern forming. Because <laughs> I would ask for that fiver back, Catherine. Oh eight four five nine four double five five double five. Let's get rid of the tip. Travel news for beds, cards, and bugs. BBC Three Counties Radio. The M1 already looking quite heavy this morning between Junction 11 at Dunstable Road and Junction 10 at Faluton Airport Spur Road. Taking a look at the A5, that's looking rather heavy on the sensors at the moment, just around Luton Road. And the A1M also rather heavy around Junction 7 for Stevenage. Taking a look at the M25 heading anti-clockwise, it's queuing at the moment between Junction 17 at Maple Cross and Junction 16 for the M40. The A41 Northwestern Avenue, that's rather slow moving just around the Dome roundabout. And so far, at the trains, everything's running to time. No problems or delays. Nicola Richards, BBC Three Counties Radio. Thank you very much. 7.16. It is uh, Wednesday, the 22nd of October. I'm Ian Lee. These are your headlines on BBC Three Counties Radio. Milton Keynes has objected to government plans to cut red tape in the taxi industry. But last night, the House of Lords said controversial parts of the deregulation bill could still go ahead. A Bedfordshire-based company says it's struggling to meet demands for Ebola survival equipment. And in last night's football, there were wins for Milton Keynes Dons and Luton, a draw for Watford and defeats for Wickham and Stevenage. The keys are... BBC Three Counties Radio. It's all about the food. There's going to be stuff flying around yeah. everywhere, isn't there? Yeah. We've been very clever with the dishes today because all of the dishes can be adapted for pies. Nick Coffer's Weekend Kitchen. Absolutely delicious, beautifully flavoured, perfect seasoning. Couldn't ask for more in a bowl, really. Flavours um, getting better, really. That's that's the main difference. Local chef showcasing simple, straightforward dishes you can try at home. On a Sunday afternoon, when you you know you're a little bit strapped for time and you're hungry, there's no messing about with it, no faffing around. It's done. Sweet corn soup. Yeah, really kind of good, great this time of year. Really full in season now. Nick Coffer's Weekend Kitchen every Sunday morning from eleven on BBC Three Counties Radio. Usman. Usman, 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 No. Calm down. My name's Catherine. No, Usman's having a um um uh a fit on Twitter. He's having a it's not swear, but is it a fitter? Yes. Yes. Okay, we've been caught out with weak ankles. What did you say? He says, uh, Usman says, guys, you are tiring every taxi driver with the same brush. I've not got a tarry brush here. It is one of the worst jobs out there. I do it part-time along my full-time. I hate every minute I do. What have we, what have we said that's bad about taxi drivers? No. We just said we like to choose who we, who we have drivers. Yeah, we just said that some of them are dodge pots, some of them uh, stop in petrol stations, some of them get their mates to come in as well. Um, and, and, and some of them are perfectly kind and yeah. nice, and I always tip them. Usman, 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 Usman. One time, Usman, back down. Um, me and my mum was in the taxi, and we. You, you and your mum was, was at the taxi. The taxi. <laughs> was in a taxi. Were. We were in a taxi. Yep. And we sang the whole way to him, and then when we got out, we said, "How much is that?" And he went, "No, don't worry about it." Just and get I out of my well, car, please. You drive me sure? nuts. He said, "You've entertained me so much. I'm not going to charge you." I tell you what, I don't like. 
you get some taxi drivers that are characters and they'll um like do bits of shakespeare or they'll do a performance to try and make the journey more interesting i hate that i want to get in the cab i want silence i don't want to talk to the cab driver i had a new york taxi driver once so i'll never forget he was basically woody allen he even did the voice it's like oh my mother's sick i gotta go out to the hamptons this weekend my mother's real sick and he was that was all the way and it was that tone of voice the whole time with that voice Mm. that hair those glasses. It's Lady Allen. It's Lady Woody Allen. It's incredible. You, exactly like. Angela's in Bedford. Morning, Angela. Good morning, Ian. Do you agree with me about annoying cab drivers? Um, I do. I mean, some can be quite annoying. Yeah. Um, I actually drove taxis myself for about three years in the 90s. Gosh, you must have been tired. So, <laughs> well, I, I, I didn't do nights. I no. used to go in early mornings. OK. Um, but the weekends, yeah. uh, you could still have people coming sort of home from the night before. Yeah, oh, blimey. So yeah. it was, you know, it was quite an eye-opener. Yeah. But um, sometimes uh, I used to recite some of my poetry to oh, them, yeah, yeah. and uh, which was, uh, you know, I mean, some people Hellish. didn't want to talk, so no. you had to sort of gauge, you know, whether to speak or not. Well, how would you de- how would you determine if uh, the the passenger was a fan of um, homemade poetry? <laughs> well, you, uh, usually um, the people that sort of are interested in talking, you know, they sort of start a conversation yeah. and. And, uh, you know, if, if the subject went on to sort of, you know, what do you do, you know, when you're not taxi driving? Oh. And sometimes I would say, oh, well, I actually write poetry and... Stop the cab! I want to get out now! <laughs> Please! Stop it! <laughs> well, I, I did have some people, you know, and I'd recite something for them and then they'd say, oh, at the end of the journey, well, you know, well, thank you for that. I was, you know, I've never had a taxi driver that... You know, recited a poem for us before. But I must say, I had, um, uh, I've had a few experiences with taxi drivers where they were, they can be. I mean, there's a lot of good drivers out there. Yeah. And then you get the drivers that will be talking to their mates on the phone oh, while they're yeah. driving. Yeah, yeah, I've had that. I did have one, um, one particular day before I actually had a car myself and uh, got in, uh, he sat in the car and it was pouring with rain. Yeah. And watched us load our shopping into the boot. Oh, dear. And then when we got there, we got out, and he sat in the car waiting for us to get our stuff out of the boot. So we got our stuff out of the boot, we left the boot open for him. Good so. for you. But, That'll learn um, him. That yeah. will... What is it with the tips, Angela? Come on, why don't you just tell me how much the, 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 the fare is, and I'll give you that. Why have I got to give you a tip for doing your job? No, well, I don't, I don't think you should, because, oh. I mean, when I worked, I mean, some, some drivers had their own cabs. And some work for the company like myself, and you get a. I think the company gets sixty percent, and you get forty yeah. percent. But um, well, hang on, you don't get the full tip. Um, well, it depends. Oh. I mean, I mean you, you, they can give you a bit extra, but I think what? I think if your your cab's clean and you're presentable and you you clean yourself and you're polite and. You know, I mean, there are a, a lot of good drivers out there, but then again, you you sort of do encounter the ones Fiend. that you know. Yeah. They don't really. Did you ever? Because we'll, 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 if we, if I were to push this, Angela, I would get gentlemen cab drivers phoning in, telling us stories of daring do, and how um, they'd had young or older women in their cab who couldn't afford the fare. But surely there's some way I can, uh, I can, uh, I can make you happy, Mister Cab Driver. Do you, did, 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 did it ever work in reverse, Angela? Did you ever get anything like that? No, I didn't. No, I, I, I. Uh, would one... you have taken it? Well, no, definitely not. Good for you. Good for you, Angela. Thank you very much indeed. 08459 four double five five double five is the phone number. I don't get the tipping of the cab driver. Why why do we do it? There's um where's the um where's the place um um sorry? Sorry. What? What are you laughing at? You know you know we've got a playhouse in the bottom of the garden. I do know, I've seen it, yeah, I've been in, I've been in it. Well, the girls have got a walkie talkie so oh, that I can shout them in. Beautiful. And it uses the same frequency as the taxis. Yeah. Oh, yes. <laughs> so we can hear them talking about, well, I don't know what they're talking about half the time, but yeah. talking about fares and that. And occasionally the taxi drivers in the mid Bedfordshire area where I live will get, leave her alone, leave her, <laughs> put that down, put your sister down. Every few years I buy a CB radio because I love the idea of CB. But then you have to get a massive aerial mm. to put it on the roof of the house. And that's where I kind of bail out. But I think it's time that I bought a CB radio again. These walkie-talkies are quite powerful. Wowzers. I changed channel, then we got some brother and sister talking. Oh. 
it's actually quite fascinating. Oh wait, four five nine four double five five double five. Now, last week, we heard from a Bedfordshire dad who refused to send his daughter to school without a face mask because of the Embola, as he referred to it. Today, we're hearing about a Bedfordshire-based company who are struggling to meet demands for Ebola survival equipment. Preppers in Roxton have sold, always sold axes and gas masks, but now they have an entire range devoted to disease prevention and protection. If you go to facebook.com forward slash BBC3CR, you can have a little look at uh, Justin Dealey um, wearing some of the equipment. It really is quite uh, uh, upsetting. Our reporter Justin Dealey. Went and spoke to the shop's owner, Lincoln Miles. At the moment, the main products we're selling out at the moment is the NBC suits. Uh, we've got the full British NBC suits and Canadian C3 gas masks. Uh, which are both work together to protect against Ebola and other sort of viruses. You've got all these boxes w- which have just arrived. As we look inside them, I can see the masks, and as soon as they've come in, they've sold out. Yeah, almost all of our supplies are sold out. Uh, we used to, we went from selling about five a week to run about 50, 60 a week. And, yeah, we're, as soon as they're coming in, before they're on the shelf, they're straight out the door. But is this people abroad, people in the UK? Uh, majority of them are in the UK. We've had a couple in America, but most of them are in the UK. Seriously? Yeah. I mean, are you surprised by this? Because there haven't been any cases in this country. Does, does it surprise you you're selling out to, to people from the UK? I was surprised by the amount of people that, that were interested in it and that are getting themselves prepared. I wasn't expecting as much as much people as there was, really, that, that got involved with it. And it's going to sound absolutely horrible to say this, but it must be a blessing for you being at a new business. You opened earlier this year. Having this uh, influx of sales, it must be a blessing for you. Yes, de- de- definitely. Being sort of so early into business, uh, that it's all sort of hit off and we've got so many orders coming in. It's great for us, really. Wow. I'm absolutely shocked that people are buying this stuff. And no disrespect to your business. Um, let's just take a look in here as well. Wow. Um, it's... Um, it's interesting. Um, tell us what you've got in here. Various different things for all sorts of survival and emergency situations. Uh, we've got bushcraft, survival knives, uh, food ration packs. Food ration packs? Tell me about those. Uh, things like they're a small box of 24-hour rations. So, I mean, you could keep one in the bottom of a bag, in the boot of a car. Uh, it takes very little room. But it's all if you were stranded or something, you could mm. survive easily. Again, no disrespect, but, uh, but people are buying this stuff? Yeah, we get, we get tons of orders. It's yeah. really busy. Have you ever been in a situation where you are uh, close to, to dying then? No, not, not personally at the moment. That's a good thing. <laughs> yeah, always happy. <laughs> Let's walk back out, out here again to, to these Ebola masks. Um, I think we'll get, get a picture of them. I think to describe them, they, they look very much like a gas mask, don't they? Yeah, yeah, yeah. They're the Canadian military issue gas masks. They look strange. Uh, people walking down the street wearing those. And uh, the suit here, do you mind if I touch that? Um, too late, I'm touching it now anyway. <laughs> Almost like an army suit, aren't they? Yeah, yeah, so full, full trousers and trousers and uh, the, the top with a full hood, uh, all full sealed. So it's a full NBC kit. With them and a mask, you're going to be protected against anything. I mean, the day we see people walking down the street in those, that, that is a day to, to worry. Just lastly, do you think people are, are blowing this out of proportion? You're selling lots of these masks and, and these suits. We heard from a man last week who's refusing to send his daughter to school because the school have said, nope, you can't wear a mask. He's worried about her safety. Do you think, as a nation, we're starting to get a bit too scared now? We're blowing this out of proportion. I think it's important to keep it into perspective. At the moment, there hasn't been any cases in the UK. So things like, you know, it's perfectly safe to walk around in public. You shouldn't be scared of doing that at the moment. But it's worthwhile being prepared and having the equipment in a garage, in your bedroom, uh, just so if it does appear, then you are you are protected if, if it does come to the UK. Giza. Well, that's uh, Justin Dealey speaking to the owner of uh, Preppers that's selling uh, Embola. Uh, uh, safety equipment. I, I really uh, do think it's it's carrying things a little bit too far. I mean, good luck to the fella, but um, there's no need, is there? There's no need. It's not going to happen over here. That's my prediction, and that's the official prediction of the BBC. I'm not sure why these Embola suits need to be camo either. <laughs> I'm not sure they're proper hazmat suits. Right. Well, I'm sure the fella knows. He knows what he's doing. He knows what he's saying. Is it a little bit too far? Is there a part of you, dear listener, that's thinking? You can never be, you know, better to be safe than sorry. 08459 four double five five double five. Oh, also, Paul Scoynes has sent in an email. Uh, he's raised the game when it comes to taxi driver stories. Oh, no. We'll be talking about taxi drivers having wee-wees oh. after this. Travel news for beds, cards and bugs. BBC Three Counties Radio. 
cutting off on the M1 heading southbound. Two lanes closed at the moment, just between Junction 12 for Flitwick and Junction 11 for Dunstable Road. There's an obstruction in the road there. Taking a look so far at the A1M, very heavy moving around Junction 7 for Stevenage at the moment. And on the sensors, the M25 heading anti-clockwise, very slow moving between Junction 21 for the M1 and Junction 20 at Kings Langley. At the moment in Watford on St Albans Road at Langley Road, the traffic lights there aren't working, so to approach that with care. And the M40 is looking heavy on camera, heading northbound from the Denham roundabout to the M25. So far on the trains, no reported problems or delays. Nicola Richards, BBC Three Counties Radio. Across beds, hearts and bugs. This is BBC Three Counties Radio. It's 7.30, I'm Simon Oxley. Milton Keynes Council has objected to government plans to cut red tape in the taxi industry, but last night the House of Lords said controversial parts of the deregulation bill could go ahead. The government has been criticised by the National Audit Office for not deporting enough foreign criminals, and a Bedfordshire-based company says it's struggling to meet demand for Ebola survival equipment. Three Counties Sports. BBC Three Counties Radio. Watford are down to second in the championship after being held two all a turn by Nottingham Forest. Odion Agarlo and Amatej Vidra penalty had twice put the Hornets in front. Here's head coach Slavisa Jukanovic. We made uh, many brilliant action. We made many, many chances. Uh, last half hour we lost our order, tactically order. I am not happy with the last uh, half hour, but really I am very happy with the uh, first hour. I can be happy with the result because what we always want to do, win the game, but I am not disappointed. Milton Keynes Dons are up to fourth in League One after coming from behind to beat Fleetwood 2 1 at Stadium MK. Carl McFadden and a late penalty from Benica Foby gave Carl Robinson's side the points. I thought the boys were magnificent. Honestly, I really, really do. I'm so, so proud. I said them at half time at 0 0. These are nights, these are special nights. These are nice to determine who you are as an individual. And we've not been able to stand up and be counted over, over recent years in these evenings. I think we certainly have done today against a very, very good side as well because they're a good team. Wickham stay top of League Two despite losing 2-1 at Exeter and after taking an early lead through Peter Murphy, his boss, boss Gareth Ainsworth. It's been a heck of a run we've been on and, uh, and the lads just maybe look a little bit tired. We've put a mammoth, mammoth effort in to get where we've got. You know, there's been some chances, so that, that's the positive for me. Uh, even when you're... When you're playing bad, you're still in the game. Luton a third and just a point behind Wickham after a Mark Cullen hat-trick gave John Stills' side a 3-1 win over Dagenham at Kenilworth Road. You know, you've got to win in all conditions on all days and against all opposition. And, you know, the games are tough every week. Um, and to, to have done that, I'm, obviously, I'm, I'm, I'm delighted. But Stevenage lost 3-2 at Portsmouth, despite goals from Dean Wells and Chris Beardsley. And in the Champions League, Chelsea thrashed Maribor 6-0. Manchester City let slip a 2-0 lead to draw 2 all against CSKA in Moscow. Tonight it's Liverpool versus Real Madrid and Arsenal away to Anderlecht. BBC Three Counties News and Sport. The next full bulletin is at 8. Call 08459 455 555. BBC Three Counties Radio. So, um, to send you a little something on your uh, private email address, Catherine. So I see. You got it? I'm looking. Yeah? You liking? Have you sent me anything? <laughs> Privately. I f- no, I'm not, Kelly. Oh. I forgot I had them, Kath, sorry. Uh, oh. It's me peeping in Dev's... Uh... <laughs> it's us at Coronation Street. <laughs> it's me peeping through <laughs> Dev's letterbox. <laughs> Dev, are you in? Dev! Dev! I want to make love to you, Dev! <laughs> no, I'm not in. Just, he... like, oh, Kath. That's Can... what you do. Oh, Kath. Oh, yeah, that's Fat Pat you're doing from EastEnders. Can we... By the way, they're bringing back all of the dead people, not Mike Reed, uh, the people that died in EastEnders for a Halloween special. That's my chair. <laughs> Um, I thought that was fear. Can we find a worse, a worse actor than Dev? He is the worst actor ever. He's brilliant for it. I mean, he'd make a great pantomime villain because he's so over the top. But he's he's such a terrible oh, actor. Oh, Ian, he's awful. Oh wait, four five nine four double five five double five. Worst actors than Dev. Well, he's not with us anymore. But Mike Reed. I mean, when he turned up on Pat's doorstep with that yeah. spinning bow tie. What the hell was Run Around all about? <laughs> I don't. Oh, I know we don't often indulge in kids' TV because it's but that Run Around. <laughs> and who is he, who is less like the kind uncle than Mike Reed, yeah. the governor? 
Yeah. Worse, he can run around. Worse, I would say Mike Reed was a better actor than Dev. Do you think? Yeah, I would say so. I would say. Worst actors than Dev, please. 08459 four double five five double five. Also taking your cab stories. And it's as vague as that. Um, it's as vague as that. Paul Scoynes has uh, sent me a story about a cab driver. Political reporter Paul, Sco- Paul Scoynes. My wife once got a mini cab and the driver asked to come in and use our toilet at the end of the journey. That old chestnut. He then goes on to say, mental. <gasps> uh, well, years ago when I had a job... Um, that involved getting up very early, uh, and they would send a cab to pick me up from work. It was a luxury, luxury of getting up at half past three and there'd be a cab. Uh, and I saw the cab driver having a wee-wee in my front garden. <gasps> in my front garden! That's insane, isn't it? So, OK, where do we take this? Well, we talk about cab drivers, uh, your stories about cab drivers, and also your story about cab drivers having a wee. And also, by default, ipso facto, your stories about where you've had a wee. 08459 oh, right, five, 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 double five. What Classic. about cab drivers who go above and beyond? There might be a cab driver who came to your rescue. When? I'm just saying it for Usman. Oh, Usman. Usman's got, Usman's got over it now. Okay. I've bribed him. It's a bit of the old payola. By saying his name loads of times, you're right. I've got a bit of heartburn. I literally have no response to that. Do you want me to rub it better? Yeah. That's not her heart. Uh, Usman, uh, the payola, I said his name so many times, I've won him round. I've hypnotised him into thinking I was doing a good thing. Usman. 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 Let's play the Usman game, right? So we can't say it at the same time, okay? Okay. Usman. Usman. Oh, shucks. Right, okay. Usman. 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 Yeah, that was a good one. Dennis, do you want to play the Usman game? No, thank you. OK, what have you got for us? Thanks for calling. <laughs> Taxi drivers. Yeah? I used to be one. Of course you did, mate. Was this before or after you were in prison? No, and befo- no, no, And where exactly no, was it in relation no, to no, Douglas no, Fairbanks no. Jr. giving you a big French kiss and uh, in relation to you making uh, rocking horses? Well, it's part of the system, yes. Part of the system. I went as a part-time taxi driver for someone else. Then I got a plate of my own. Oh, right. I had some fun. Because you're talking about... Turn your radio off! It's not on. Well, then why are we getting the Larson effect? I don't know. It's you you laughing. I'm not... Literally, I'm not, and I probably won't for the next two and a half minutes. Right, OK. Fair enough. Talking about having a wee for taxi drivers. Yes. Up to not long ago... There used to be laws in the London area. You could have a wee-wee on the back wheel? No, you had to stand against the back wheel and pee against the back wheel. And uh, the poli- I told, pointed this out to a policeman when he was running me around, and he said he'd have me for exposure. I said, I won't, I'd just do it down my trouser leg. But there was all daft ideas. But, however, taxi drivers, yes. I've, had, I've had ladies offering me something. But unfortunately, she was only a pudgy little woman, and yeah. I knew what she was like. Yeah. So I said, well, hang on a minute, if you've got no money, I shall take you back to the police station. Oh. She soon found some money. Dennis, thank you very much indeed. Thank you very much indeed. I think there may have been his brain echoing there. I'm not quite sure. Usman. 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 Oh. It's, it's, a, it's a fun game, guys. It's, it's the Usman game. Think. It's the Usman game. Everyone can play it, apart from, ironically, Usman. He's not allowed to play it. That's, that's the He's rule. He's got the advantage, you see. Yeah, exactly. He says it all the time. 08459 four double five five double five is the telephone number. Uh, I, don't, I do not get why we tip the cab driver. You tell me what the fare is, and I'll pay the f- fare's fare. That's the cab... That's when, I, when Boris Johnson steps down uh, uh, to become even more of a chancer in Uxbridge as their member of parliament, I'm going to run for London Mayor. Or I might run for um, Mayor of Watford, Miss Thornhill. Are you listening? I won't, actually. You're probably She's not bothered. I think no. she wants to be an MP now. Yeah, OK. Well, then I'm, and I'm going to start a campaign called Fair's Fair. And that campaign will be the abolishment of... Abolition. I'm not going to. I'm not going to get the go campaign for the abolishment of abolition. That would be an oxymoron. I, be the abolishment yeah, of right. um, <laughs> oxycute those spots. It's going to be the abolishment of the tipping system in cabs. Fair, fair's fair. Yeah, ca- the prices would go up ever so slightly, but what fair's if, fair. What if you have an exemplary driver? How do you reward that? You don't punch him or do a wee wee in his car. 
He's doing his job. I don't, at the end of the, I'm doing my job, right, and I get paid. I don't, at the end of it, go knocking on people's doors going, uh, excuse me, Governor, uh, I don't know if you had the breakfast show this morning, figure show you probably didn't, but could you, couldn't spare a few, Bob, could you, Governor? Because the money that I'm getting paid isn't enough. They're all getting paid cash in hand, cab drivers anyway, so it's tax free, that's why they've all got swimming pools. The only reason you don't do that is because you haven't got their addresses. That's true. One in three people don't even know their landline number. Mm. I don't know mine. I struggle. I know the landline number for uh, the house I lived in for the first 11 years of my life. It's 01753 745 745 449. Yeah. Can I tell you something depressing? Um, The only landline number I know off by heart is Dennis and Dunstable. You want to sort that out. 53. No, I won't. Well, I'm tempted to give out his number some mornings. The landline telephone is all but dead, a study suggested yesterday. That's my hotline, though. You don't say. That's my hotline, though. To what? Well, I know... So when you make booty calls? I know if uh, that rings, it's me mum. I know if that rings, that's a debt agency. That's a debt agency after someone called Mr Trevor Johnson. Oh, no, they were ringing my my mobile asking for Alan. One day I pretended to be Alan. Oh, yeah, I play I'm that Alan. Game. Of I course, play. I'm Alan. Don't I, I sound like an Alan? Half of those surveyed said they now use their home phone rarely or never, and one in ten does. We only have the home phone so we can get the internet. That's what that's for. Some 28% of people cannot recall their home number, and more than a third ignore their landline when it rings, expecting nuisance calls. The, well, the, the, the landline will be gone soon, won't it? We, we, we don't need it. It's just you've got to have one to get, get to internet, isn't it? Mm. I don't want one. Do you want some Texas? Yes, please, mate. My ex-wife used to drive me mad insisting I tip people, says Andrew from High Wycombe. Yeah. People are paid to do a job. Oh, this sounds like my ex. Yeah. His name wasn't Andrew. People are paid to do a job and being low paid isn't an excuse to expect a tip. If someone gives me exceptional service, then I may give them a token of appreciation, but more importantly, I'd thank them. Catherine, if you're buying a car, would you say you've kept that car nice and clean and explained the features, etc.? Here's a couple of hundred quid extra for your trouble. Um, no. I don't, uh, listen, if you're doing your job, brilliant. You get paid for it. You're not paid enough. It ain't my problem. Oh, but the service industry... Well, forget this. If, you don't, if you're not getting paid enough as a waitress, well, then don't be a waitress. But it's also your way of showing them they're doing the right things. It's customer feedback. And you can also withhold it if you want to. It's I'll a very it, powerful thing. I'll fill in a survey. I, well, customer feedback. Oh. Thanks for that. Really great service. It's only a couple There's of your quid. feedback. It's only a couple of quid. Wait, weren't a couple of quid the other night in Salford? Well, we dined out on fine meats. Yeah, I know we did. But d- d- uh, there's always the pressure of how much am I supposed to give? Gosh, I thought you had fun time, and now it turns out it was, it was it wrapped was with anxiety. Hideously. Hang on, are you talking about tipping the waitress or tipping Kath? A bit confused. I, uh, oh, I never get Did tips. you make any money from Ian? No. Mm. no. Aidan, High Wycombe, because tipping is generally accepted and endorsed by British people within the service industry, drivers, cleaners, waitresses, dare I refer you to speech on tipping from Mr Pink in Reservoir Dogs, a pound is a pound, stop being so tight. Yeah, but it's not a pound, though. And also, he would have said dollar, and also, I'm never going to tip someone who's working behind a bar. You see that when they put your, your... You go to a bar now, they'll put your change in a little saucer. And what they're saying is, could you leave the change on this little saucer for me? No! All you've done is pour me a drink. All you've done is you've got that, that uh, thing that looks like a telephone, press button four for Sprite, and done me a glass of Sprite. I'm not going to give you extra money, because the Sprite is expensive enough as it is. Gran pays £5,000 to Wi-Fi-proof her home. People like this make me sick. Four coats of anti-radiation paint to beat her headaches. Mm. For many, they are essential to modern living. But mobile phones and the internet have made Stephanie Russell's life a nightmare, she says. I do worry about it a bit. Why? Because I sit next to the Wi-Fi hub at home, that's where my seat is. (laughs) And I'm sure it's affecting my brain. No, mate, you've always been a plum. Uh, d- d- it's going through my head, isn't it? No, yeah, but so are radio waves. Radio waves have been going through your head for literally... How long has radio been around for? 30, 35 years. And I've been sitting under a great big transmitter for a good 10 years. The grandmother is so sensitive to wireless internet signals that her health deteriorates as soon as she comes into contact with them. She says... How does she know? Exactly. She I might as well get... hear if her plug's on. She might as well get a hat made out of tin foil and stick that on her head. Would that help? 
Miss Russell, 72, has spent £5,000 trying to keep out stray radiation from neighbours' Wi-Fi and passing mobile users by covering her home in anti-radiation point paint. And boy, doesn't it look good. She's missed a corner of it. Don't tell her. She has four thick coats, thick something, of the protective material, uh, material applied inside and out in the hope it will keep her home signal free. She says she suffers from electrosensitivity, a condition which she has made up herself. When exposed to radio waves emitted by... Do you remember in the old days when people could pick up, um, uh, like, Radio Caroline on their teeth? Could they really, though? I thought that was just in the Beano. She first noticed... It's not a medical journal, is it? Imagine having uh, Roberto in your mouth. She first noticed the effect of the debilitating condition when she made it up... Ten years ago. Nah, a load of old rubbish, love. You wasted your money. What she's had there, she's got headaches. She spoke to her mate who said, oh, yeah, no, I'm a painter and decorator. I can sort that out. You need anti-radiation paint. Have you got £5,000, please? That's what's happened. 08459 455 555. Travel news for beds, cards and bugs. BBC Three Counties Radio. It's looking very slow moving on the sensors at the moment on the Great North Road, heading it southbound at the Black Cat roundabout. The M1 also looking rather heavy moving between Junction 11 of Dunstable Road and Junction 10 for Luton Airport Spur Road. So far on Hemel Hempstead, the A41, that's looking quite heavy on the sensors between the Hemel Hempstead turn off and Junction 20 for the M25. Taking a look at the M25 itself, it's queuing at the moment between Junction 17 at Maple Cross and Junction 16 for the M40. And in Boreham Wood, it's queuing on camera on the Barnet Bypass between Stirling Corner and Mill Hill Circus. So far, there's no problems or delays to the trains. Nicola Richards, BBC Three Counties Radio. Nicola, thank you so much. It really is kicking off on Twitter. We're calling it hashtag dev. Can we find an actor worse than dev? Well, some people have named actors worse than dev, but some people are getting very angry with the fact that we're slagging off dev from Coronation Street. If you want to join in the debate, then the, uh, go to a social network of your choice, primarily Twitter and put hashtag dev. 7.46, it's Wednesday the 22nd of October. I'm Ian Lee. These are your headlines on BBC Three Counties Radio. Milton Keynes Council has objected to government plans to cut red tape in the taxi industry. But last night, the House of Lords said controversial parts of the deregulation bill could go ahead. A Bedfordshire-based company says it's struggling to meet demand for Ebola survival equipment. And in last night's football, there were wins for MK Dons and Luton, a draw for Watford and defeats for Wickham and Stevenage. Coming up, hashtag dev, and would you steal from a wishing well? We'll find out more after the weather with Kate. Beds, hearts and bucks weather. BBC Three Counties Radio. A calmer day than yesterday. The wind fell a little lighter overnight last night. It's still breezy, but not quite as noticeable as yesterday. We've got some sunshine. The clear sky has been a bright start this morning, but a chilly one. Temperatures across the board in single figures at the moment. We'll see an increase of cloud as we head through the day, but that's really just going to turn the sun a little hazier through the afternoon. Maximum temperature feeling milder at 13 Celsius. Overnight tonight, the cloud continues to thicken we could get one or two spots of light rain mixed in there as well. Largely cloudy, but it will feel milder than the night we've just had. The wind picking up from the southwest helping. The minimum temperature down to 10 Celsius, perhaps 9 in the countryside. For tomorrow morning, it's a cloudy start to the day. One or two outbreaks of rain, particularly for places, high places like the Children's, for example. You may get more rain out there. But for many of us, a dry day, just cloudy, but it is going to feel milder with that southwesterly flow. We're looking at a maximum of 15 Celsius. That's your forecast. Wet enough for ya? BBC Three Counties Radio's big tour of beds, hearts and bucks. It's a beautiful village. We're surrounded by nice open countryside. From the top of the springs, looking down, it really is stunning. All this week, we're uncovering Barton Le Clay. It's a super village. It's got all the amenities. You've got the old part on one side of the A6. You've got the newer part on the other side. Telling everyone about where you live. It's a nice atmosphere. People walking the dogs. In snow, in sunshine, in a beautiful sunset. I wouldn't leave it. If you paid me millions, I still wouldn't leave. I love it here. The big tour of beds, hearts and bucks. All right. BBC Three Counties Radio. Find that woman. Find that woman and let's offer a two million quid to leave Barton the clay. I bet she would. <laughs> I bet she would. 
sides. Yeah. What you got for us? Um, well, first of all, a practical point from David Hartford. Can paint be removed so that in the event of her death or moving house, talk about the woman who's uh, painted a house with £5,000 worth of uh, anti-Wi-Fi paint. Yes. Can the paint be removed so in the event of her death or moving house, the next occupant can receive a Wi-Fi service? She's, that house is never going to be sold unless it's being sold to a fruitcake like her. Unless the paint doesn't work. <laughs> it, can't, it can't work. Anti-radiation paint. Right, we need a, where, where's that? Is it James, the scientist? Who's the fella that invented that thing that keeps kidneys alive? Oh, clever, clever... Clogs. Clever clogs. It, it, clever clogs. If you're listening... Billy Wiggles. Billy Wiggles. If you're listening... <laughs> Paint cannot stop Wi-Fi. It can't. Matt says, I sell wireless products and microwaves emit more radiation than wireless routers, but sadly, as this woman has no wireless products, then I guess she can't search on the internet to find out what rubbish she's coming out with. <laughs> oh, and we've got some uh, some comment on the um, cover-up for God's sake phone-in we're doing. Oh, yeah. This is this is at the church in Sardinia where he's put a picture up saying, basically, you've got to cover up, which yeah. is, is, is it happens in all the churches in the continent. And actually, he's talking about a knee-length skirt. Yeah. He, he doesn't want you to be completely covered from head to toe, but yeah. just don't be flashing your uh, breakfast. Um, oh dear, I don't want to see your cornflakes. Exactly. Why do some women dress as if they were still on the head night while at a wedding? See, weddings I think are the... Uh, women dress... Uh, and it's prim- I mean, men dress awfully, but women on weddings, particularly for common families and northern families, they dress like prostitutes. Fact. No, the weddings weren't a problem. I, th- what I've noticed is christenings. Right. That's when they go dressed up for the do afterwards. Yeah, and, yeah. you know, they dress up. Yeah. Anyway, so uh, why do some women dress as if they were still on the head night at a wedding? Show some respect while in a religious place, says Ben of Buckingham, respectfully. Uh, and we've also got this one from Bob, who says, what are your thoughts on kilted Scots at weddings? Yes. You know there's no underwear underneath oh. there, yeah. says Bob. Oh, wait, you know four. it. Oh eight four five nine. You know that that's okay. I'm giving the going on. Oh eight four five nine four double five five double five. We're also talking about taxi drivers. Have a t- has a taxi driver ever done a wee uh, in your premises, on your premises? Um, after I've had one do one in my front garden and Paul Scoines that we don't know if the taxi driver who asked to use his toilet <laughs> after dropping his wife off was was given that privilege. It's, you're a hot. You're a cold person to 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 tell um, a service that they can't use your toilet. Mm, I think that was dodgy. Do, do just, you? He's just brought a load of... Do woman. you? Listen, he's just brought... I don't think he wanted a wee. I think he was just trying to... It was his way of asking if she might make him a coffee. You mean a coffee? Yes. Oh, eight four five nine four double five five double five. We'll get to the uh, dev. Can we find an actor worse than dev? It really is kicking off on Twitter. We'll get to that in a little bit. Oh, yes, Catherine. Better in Hollyoaks. That dad in Hollyoaks was terrible. No, they're, yeah, they're, they're all, they're all uh, fine actors in Hollyoaks, Catherine. Mm. I, think you're ta- I think you're talking nonsense. Hertfordshire police have been brought in to investigate the theft of £20 in coins from a wishing well. They were not... They were the property of not Fairyland. Sorry, Catherine, I'm, I'm stumbling over your excellent words. Property of the Hearts and Middlesex Wildlife Trust. Sarah Buckingham is from the Hearts and Middlesex Wildlife Trust. Joins me now. Morning, Sarah. Good morning. What happened? <clears throat> well, um, some thieves spent quite a while breaking into our wildlife garden on the edge of Veranamian Park in St Albans. And they stole the donations from our wishing well, um, which is very disappointing for us because, as a local charity, we rely we rely on donations from our supporters and people joining us as members. So, um, yes, quite quite disappointing for it, us. It, it, it's only it's only twenty quid. I'm sure every penny yeah. is very precious to you. Is, <laughs> is that worth bringing getting the police involved? Um, I think any anything like this is worth getting the police involved. You know, whether it's in in a way that the amount is immaterial. It's the fact that people broke into our our property and stole that money. I'm not I'm not sure it matters that it's only twenty pounds. <clears throat> and I think it's um it's just it's a, just a real disappointment for us because <clears throat> we do at the moment we rely so much on our fundraising efforts, even more than you know, in these times of economic um, downturn, we rely even more on our supporters and our members to help us protect local wildlife. So <clears throat> you may just say, well, it's 20 quid, you know, it's nothing. But you, if you start to do that, then you can, you know, you're sort of on a slippery slope, I think. Did they do any damage? Uh, they did damage. We've had to close our wildlife garden, which oh. is a real shame because it's um, people really enjoy that on the edge of Verilane Park. It's a free, it's a free 
free to come in. Uh, it's a lovely place for people to come and find out about wildlife and what they can do in their own garden. Um, and we've had to close it for the time being because they broke off the padlock and the gate is damaged and the wishing well is damaged. So, yeah, real shame. And I think it is important that people, it is highlighted by the police, even though it's only 20 quid. I think it's important. Because there will, I mean, it is awful. Of course it is. And yeah. it's, it's terrible what someone is. But there will be people thinking, oh, for goodness sakes, Sarah, it, it, it's 20 quid. You know, the, the police have got, you know, police resources are being stretched. They are uh, at, at breaking point at the moment. Are you not wasting their time? Um, well, I think that's. Uh, I think the police thought it was important enough to to take some time over it. There, there are other businesses and companies and organisations in the area which um, we know have been checked out, if you like, recently. So, if you start to let people get away with twenty quid here and there. It may be 500 quid next time or someone gets seriously hurt in the car park in the dark. So I think it's really important. <laughs> Can we just check, Sarah, that all, all, all wishes that were made with those coins that were chucked in, will those wishes still be granted? They will, they Excellent. will. And we want to say thank you to everyone who does donate to us. And if you want to find out more about the work that we do, heartswildlifetrust.org.uk. Keep up the good work, Sarah. Thank you very much indeed. I'm joined by uh, Sergeant Scott Curran, who's part of the Safer Neighbourhood team at Hertfordshire Constabulary. Morning, Scott. Good morning. You're never going to catch these people, are you? Well, uh, the purpose of an appeal such as today is to try and raise, raise awareness and try and see if anyone's got any information about what took place that could pass on to us. Some kids broke in, broke a padlock, nicked 20 quid in coins. It may well be. It may well be that, but we'd still like to speak to those involved. Wouldn't it be cheaper for the police, considering all the resources that are being being spent on this, wouldn't it be cheaper if, you, if the police just gave them 20 quid? But it's not really about that. It's about not breaking into wells, taking items, money that is, doesn't belong to you. But we know we we know it's wrong. I, I, I just I tell you my problem with this, Scott, and it's terrible this has happened. Of course it has, and and, and I know that the, this wildlife trust they do cracking work, and it's a brilliant place. Well done them. But there are people who get their cars broken into, and the coppers don't go round. There are people who get attacked, and the, the the police don't go round. It's all done on the phone call. They will be thinking twenty quid in coins. Really, is this really the best use of police resources? Sure. Well, well, well all. Crime, all allegations, every report that's made to the police is looked at in depth. It is investigated. And such as this, we're just appealing for witnesses and anyone who may be able to help us. How much feedback you had so far? This is the first appeal that's gone out on media. I know there's been a bit of internet appeal. Um, so at the moment, it's early stages, so hopefully... Oh, Scott, 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 let's speak freely. On, you don't honestly believe that anyone's going to get in touch and say, and I, they say, look, yeah, I know the little oiks that nick that 20 quid, and I, I know where those tuppenny bits are. Sure. That's, of course it's possible. No, most definitely. OK, well, I, I, I wish you the very best of luck. I mean, it's very sad, and it's an excellent, excellent place. OK, the, you know, the, we should be supporting things like the, uh, the Hearts and Middlesex Wildlife Trust. Of course we would. Over to you, 08459 455 555. Am I being a bit harsh there? Do you think that police resources could be spent better? I'll be honest. Uh, it's 20 quid. There's a little bit of criminal damage done there, padlock and a gate. Uh, I, I mean, uh, it's going to sound cold and people will be judging me for this. I don't think it's the best use of police resources. Here's, here's the thing, though. You put the Frighteners on them now, they don't escalate. Well, as we've just, we just heard, you know, it could escalate into £500 being stolen or well, someone no, being attacked I mean in a car park. Is, what I mean is, if they're behaving like this now, yeah. OK, and we're assuming that this is kids, because who else is going to take the time to do that kind yeah. of thing? Yeah. You know, maybe if they, really, if they feel that the, the heat is on now, they might not do something worse. Possibly. Who's who's right and who's wrong? They oh, wait, might four, not five, have thought nine, that that, that was anybody's money. You know, coins in fountains. I think the padlock was a clue. I just know that there'll be people uh, listening who've had their cars broken yeah. into and the coppers don't go round. You yeah. get a crime number. Yeah. That, you know, and, and I would suggest that someone having their car smashed and, and things stolen out of the car is slightly more significant. Or maybe I've got it completely screwy there. But this is all part of this new sort of initiative or this new focus on community safety, isn't it? And about the perception of crime, the fear of crime yep. and seeing that more is being done. So, I mean, it's... 
you know. Can you, I, I, well, I, you can tell I'm not particularly clear on this. I think it's awful what happened, and I think it's a great shame of what happened, and I think that the places like the Hearts and Middlesex Wildlife Trust, we should be giving them the big thumbs up for the work they do. Well done, you. Thanks to people like you, my kids get to go and see animals and things, and, you know, well done, it's great. I do question... Uh, You know, an appeal on a BBC radio station, an appeal on the internet. Are people really going to get in touch with the police and say, yep, I know who's got that money and I can lead you to those five penny pieces? I don't know. 08459 455. If I'm wrong, please set me straight on this one. Travel news for beds, cards and bugs. BBC Three Counties Radio. Starting off on the Great North Road, it is queuing at the moment on in both directions at the Black Cat roundabouts. The M1's looking very heavy at the moment, just around Junction 9 for Redbourne on the sensors, and just getting in in St Albans that the a 414s partially blocked at Watling Street following an accident that's happened there. The M25, very slow moving, heading anti-clockwise between Junction 21 for the M1 and Junction 16 for the M40. Take a look in Watford, and at the moment the traffic lights don't seem to be working on St Albans Road, just at Langley Road to do approach that with care and the M40 on cameras looking heavy heading northbound from the Denham roundabout to the M25 Nicola Richards, BBC Three Counties Radio Nicola, you're good because I, I know you had more travel there and you cut yourself short Yeah, I did Do you want to tease us, do you want to tease us with what you're going to talk about? <sighs> Barnet Bypass Oh, coming up later the Barnet Bypass, ladies and gentlemen <laughs> Local and vocal across beds, hearts and bucks. This is BBC Three Counties Radio. It's eight o'clock, I'm Simon Oxley. The headlines, Milton Keynes Council opposes government taxi plans, not enough foreign criminals being deported and wins for MK Dons and Luton. BBC Three Counties Radio. Milton Keynes Council has objected to government plans to cut red tape in the taxi industry. It follows months of controversy, which included a convicted rapist getting a taxi licence, which led to the resignation of the mayor. But last night, the House of Lords said controversial parts of the deregulation bill could go ahead, despite this appeal by Labour's Baroness Thornton. Our experience in Milton Keynes, where serious errors by a subcommittee of councillors on licensing led to an inexcusable decision to allow a convicted sex offender to operate a private hire vehicle, illustrates the importance of getting the balance of this regulation right. And the leader of Milton Keynes Council has written to us personally asking us to oppose this. The government has been criticised by the National Audit Office for not deporting enough foreign criminals. A report says 760 foreign offenders living in the community have absconded, while as much as a billion pounds was spent last year on dealing with criminals from overseas. The World Health Organisation says treatments to tackle the Ebola outbreak in West Africa could become available within a few weeks and a vaccine could be ready by January. Meanwhile, a Bedfordshire-based company says they're struggling to meet demand for Ebola survival equipment. Lincoln Miles is from Preppers in Roxton. The, the Canadian military issue, gas masks. It's a full, full trousers and, and the, the, the top with a full hood, all full sealed, so it's a full NBC kit. With them and a mask, you're going to be protected against anything. I think it's important to keep it into perspective. At the moment, there hasn't been any case in the UK, so things like, you know, it's perfectly safe to walk around in public. You shouldn't be scared of doing that at the moment. But it's worthwhile being prepared and having the equipment. The head, of, the head of the public inquiry set up by the government into historical child sex abuse is under growing pressure to stand down. Lawyers representing victims have questioned whether Fiona Wolfe should continue in her role after she was accused by a Labour MP of being an establishment figure. Police are appealing for witnesses after around £20 worth of coins were stolen from a charity wishing well in St Albans. The well, belonging to Hearts and Middlesex Wildlife Trust in Verulamium Park, was raided earlier this month by thieves who cut off a padlock and a metal grill. In sport, Watford are down to second in the championship after being held two all at home by Nottingham Forest last night. MK Dons moved up to fourth in League One after a 2-1 win at home to Fleetwood. Wickham stay top of League Two despite losing 2-1 at Exeter, but John Stills Luton a third, just a point behind Wickham after a 3-1 win over Dagenham at Kenilworth Road. Cullen left foot in, strikes and scores! It's a hat-trick for Cullen! 
in. Cuddy's, I think he's a terrific all-round player. I just do. I think he's a terrific player. And Stevenage lost 3-2 at Portsmouth. The weather, a dry, sunny but chilly start. Cloud increasing through the day, but most parts will stay dry. A maximum temperature 13 degrees Celsius. And you can get the latest news and sport online at bbc.co.uk slash three counties. I'm being swallowed by a boa constrictor. I'm being swallowed by a boa constrictor. I'm being swallowed by a boa constrictor. And I don't like it very much. Oh, no. Oh, no. He swallowed my toe. He swallowed my toe. Oh, gee. Oh, gee. He's up to my knee. He's up to my knee. Oh, fiddle. Oh, fiddle. He's reached my middle. He's reached my middle. Oh, heck. Morning! Quite often with this show, it, it, it takes a while to get into our stride. I'm not demeaning the first hour, strong first hour this morning, but boy oh boy, the last 30 minutes. Now we're working. Can we find an actor worse than Dev in Coronation Street? If you want to join in the conversation online, it's hashtag Dev. 20 quid was nicked from a wishing well. The police are involved. They're doing appeals. Is that the best use of police resources? Your cab stories, please. And what if you let a stranger use your toilet? That'll do for the moment, but there's plenty more. 08 459 455 555. Across beds, hearts and bucks. This is BBC Three Counties Radio. Let's do some of these uh, Dev tweets. Scott says, worse than Dev? Now, I'm supposed to do an Irish accent here. Catch a cell on Ian. I'll tell you this and I'll tell you no more. Jim McDonald is worse, so he, he is. He was great. He <laughs> was great. How right. about you, Les? Scott, how about you? Oh, what was the name of his um, wife? Les. Les. Oh, Les. She's... um. Yeah. Martin, isn't she? Yeah. The fella who plays Ian Beale's son in Enders is the worst actor on the box. Dev's a genius, says Scott. Uh, Tony says, worse than Dev, the guy who played the Master of Ceremonies in Beyond Borders. <laughs> that was me, you <laughs> cheeky little sausage. <laughs> True, though, isn't it? Um, Carpet Martin says, I went to a school nativity play last year. Rather than giving some myrrh to baby Jesus, a wise man wet himself and cried. As his mum walked on the stage to comfort him, my overriding thought was, there's a better actor than Dev off Corey. <laughs> <laughs> and Lino says, Shane Ritchie was doing drunk acting on EastEnders last night. It was poor. It was poor. Leslie's in Luton. Good morning to you, Lesamond. Uh, good morning again, Ian. Good morning again. We only said good morning, what, about three hours ago as I snuck out of your bedroom. What have you got for us now? No, I'm um, about the um, 20 quid that been nicked from the wishing well, yeah? Yeah. And the police said every crime that's reported to them, they're investigated. This is what the police officer said, didn't he? Yes. Yeah, they are liars. Blimey, tell me your story, Leslie. Well, I bought a new city. A new what? And, and a new city. A new what? Seti. Oh, the Seti, yeah, it's got, t- it's got T's in it, yeah. Yeah, I bought a new Seti. Otherwise it's a C. Well, never mind, let's get on. Let's get on, yeah, all right, you're in a rush, you're going somewhere. <laughs> and um, and I've, 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 left the, you know, I've left the old one outside my passageway, right, because I live in a flat, right? <laughs> yes. And a few hours I went back out because I've had someone coming to... Um, to um, have a look at it, you know, because they were going to buy it. Yeah. And when I went out, all cushion, um, um, I'm gone. And I was very annoyed, very, very All annoyed. the cushions were gone? Yeah, because... We on your old a, uh, Yeah, because um, we had a flat here. It's about 10 guys were living in this flat, so we assumed they nicked them for, for bedding on the floor. Oh, flipping heck. Right, and we contacted the police about it because I was so I, I, I was so annoyed. Yeah. And they didn't came out. And then about two weeks later, they sent me a letter. Said they came and no, said they have investigated and found nothing. Well, what invest- investigate? Did you see them dusting for prints? They didn't come. Right? Fingerprints, not the no. singer. 
No, the, um, the, the police officer said all crime been investigated no, and they are no, investigating they... this 20 pounds that gone missing from the wishing well. Okay. No, right? In yeah. a couple of weeks' time, yeah. they probably came out and said this investigation costs up to 100,000 pounds. What, to investigation so, into your settee? No. It, Who's no, investigation? The in, they, they will come out probably a couple of weeks' time and say, well, this in, no. investigation I don't, will cost £100,000 because it, it's, over, it's over time money in their pocket. Leslie, Leslie I don't, I, in fairness to the police, I don't think they're going to say that this investigation is costing £100,000. It certainly will cost more than the 20 quid that they could have just slipped them. Leslie, thank you very much indeed. One of my joys... Can't do it now where I live. I live in a cul-de-sac. That's uh, French for dead end. One of the joys of my life when I used to live in London was leaving bits of furniture outside and watching people take it. I used to love it. I used to love it. I would film them sometimes. I mean, I didn't film them. Oh eight four five nine four double five five double five. Ever taken furniture from outside someone else's house? That's, uh, that's the phone in. Now, Milton Keynes Council is opposing government plans to cut red tape in the taxi industry. Background checks are being carried out on the area's cabbies after it emerged that a serial rapist had been fit to take fares. Last night, the House of Lords voted in favour of a bill which would allow taxi companies to sell your booking onto whomever they wished. If, if passed, travelling by cab could become a bit of a lottery. Well, joining me now is the Shadow Roads Minister, Richard Burden, and Councillor Tony Page. He's the licensing champion for the local government association. Good morning to both you gentlemen. Thanks for joining morning. us. Morning. Uh, Richard, we'll start with you. Taxi licensing is... Um, well, it's a mess, isn't it? There's no consistency. All different all boroughs and towns have, have different rules. So if I got turned down for being a taxi driver in, in Leeds, for example, I might get passed in Milton Keynes. You're quite right. It's a complete mess, which makes it so stupid what the government has decided to do. Because rather than getting proper consistency into the system, and they've got a report from the Law Commission telling them some ideas about how to do that, they've gone ahead with piecemeal reforms that are actually going to make things worse. They're going to put passengers at risk. They've had an array of people against them. You're going to hear from the local government association and Tony in the, in the minute. Women's groups and others have opposed it, victims' groups. And yet they've pressed ahead last night in the House of Lords. It's absolutely scandalous. And that there have been so many voices that have spoken up against this, Richard, as you just said. Why are the government not listening? Well, whether it's pride, whether it's just digging their heels in, I don't know. You see, they had a chance last week to take a step back and say, we've got this wrong, we'll listen to what's being said, and we'll do something right. They climbed down on one of their proposed deregulation clauses, which would have left, allowed somebody who wasn't qualified to drive a minicab, driving one when they're off duty. They, they backed down on that one, but they've gone ahead saying they'll still allow a change whereby if you phone up a taxi... Uh, a minicab firm. The minicab that rides won't necessarily come from the firm that you phoned. And they've also vote, voted to weaken the mandatory licence checks every year that there were before. So, you know, whether it's pride or whatever it is, it's really, really um, stupid that they've done this. And, you know, they had a chance to back off. They chose not to do so. Tony, your thoughts on it? Well, certainly, uh, we're, we're pressing for the government to pause all of these initiatives relating to private hire vehicles because only a few months ago they asked the Law Commission um, to review the whole um, area of uh, licensing and the Law Commission came forward with I think over 80 recommendations and we certainly want a root and branch reform. The Local Government Association believes that it's high time for a root and branch reform of all this legislation because what we're talking about are private hire vehicles, which are distinct from hackney carriages, as they call, which are the uh, traditional taxis with a meter running inside. We're not talking about the, the taxi meters. We're talking about private hire. And people often get confused between the two. And the deregulation measures, as Richard Burden has just said, um, will further weaken controls by local authorities. And local authorities are under the cost financially when it comes to enforcing a whole raft of measures. So it's at a time when local authorities are finding it very difficult to enforce the existing law, let alone a weakened and deregulated law, which will allow an operator to sell on a booking without even a buy or leave or consulting the person who originally contacted them. We think this has got real dangers. Uh, Richard Burden, you're aware, I'm sure, of the situation in Milton Keynes where a, a, a serial violent uh, rapist was uh, given a, a taxi licence. What do we need to do to stop this ever happening again? How do we improve this situation, in your opinion? 
But the, the first thing to do is, as Tony said, have a proper look at how the whole regulation regarding taxis and minicabs work. And Tony's quite right. You know, that this we're talking here about deregulation of private hire, the minicabs, not, not the, the black cabs. And you see responsible taxis and taxi firms and others are also saying there needs to be a change here. Absolutely key to what's done in the future is enforcement. Licensing authorities need to be able to have the powers to check that the people um, who are going to be licensed to run many cabs are fit to do so. We need to ensure that they're consistent around the country. But sadly, what the government did last night has been to turn things into the other direction, and that's really going to be bad for passenger safety. And after what happened in Milton Keynes, and the report that came out from the links between dodgy um, minicab drivers and uh, abuses in Rotherham, the government should and ministers really should know better than to proceed with these kind of crackpot deregulation measures. Gentlemen, I appreciate your time this morning. Thank you very much indeed. Uh, the last voice you heard there, Shadow Roads Minister Richard Burden. The other voice was Councillor Tony Page. Across beds, hearts and bucks. This is Ian Lee. BBC Three Counties Radio. Thank you for the cough, girls. You are welcome. Yeah, I am welcome. I'm welcome. It's nice, isn't it? And you're welcome. You're welcome to join us for the next 45 minutes of uh, broadcast entertainment. Cast having fun, aren't you, Cast? Why don't you tell the listener what you're up to? Well, I've been offered a new job. What? So, so long, suckers. <laughs> hey! Um, who's offering you this job? Well, um, you may have heard of him. I think I, I should have heard of him. I'm yeah. pretending I have. Yeah. Uh, last night I got this message through. Um, Be informed that with reference to your CV... I haven't oh sent a CV. Um, we have recommended you to Mr M Ibn Yassin, oh. a, renowned, a re-owned artist yeah. who wished to employ you as his personal assistant to handle his financial hey. errands in and around your county. Hey, hey, hey. Note that this will in no way interfere with your present job, so if you're interested, contact him well, on, and then there's no thing. So I wrote back yesterday, Perfect. how exciting, tell me more. Yeah. OK, so I've had a response this morning. Yeah. If you're interested in working, get back with this details. Please get back to me with your complete information. And complete is in capital, so that yeah. they're not messing about. Yeah. They want my full name, physical address, not a PO box, city, state, zip code, telephone number, age, present job, and Ibn Yassin. I mean, I don't know why he's sending this to me. Well, he's no. not got a PA. No, exactly, exactly. Once you fill this form and send your details, hey. more information would be sent to you. This is brilliant. So I've written back. Oh, this is good. Dear Mr. M. Ibn Yassin, this is all very exciting, I write, but a friend of mine has sown the seed of doubt in my brackets admittedly brilliant, brilliant mind, mind yeah. yeah she says this is all too good to be true and you're probably not really the internationally resound Ibn Yassin I would therefore be very grateful if you could prove your veracity by sending me a photograph of yourself holding a piece of paper upon which is written the message I want you Kath you have started a wonderful wonderful journey once this is done I will gladly forward all relevant information to allow our business relationship to burgeon and indeed flourish as soon as we get that picture which we will we'll put that up on the Facebook but you're going to, you're eventually going to get a phone number for this gentleman and you're going to speak to this gentleman and then I'll get a job well I don't want to uh, yeah maybe 08459 four double five five double five we'll keep you posted on how this story develops travel news for beds hearts and bugs BBC three counties radio Starting off on the A1M, and looking very heavy on the sensors, just around Junction 7 for Stevenage. Also the M25, very slow moving, heading anti-clockwise between Junction 21 for the M1 and Junction 16 at the M40. Rather slow moving in Watford Northwestern Avenue, that's looking heavy at St Albans Road. And so far taking a look in Boreham Wood, the Barnet Bypass is queuing between Stelling Corner and Mill Hill Circus. And the M25 heading clockwise, rather heavy, just at Junction 25 for Enfield, Western Road. Roadworks are taking place. So far, no problems or delays to the trains. Nicola Richards, BBC Three Counties Radio. Thank you, Nicola. 8.17, Wednesday, 22nd October. Ian Lee, BBC Three Counties News. Milton Keynes Council has objected to government plans to cut red tape in the taxi industry. But last night, the House of Lords said controversial parts of the deregulation bill could go ahead. A Bedfordshire-based company says it's struggling to meet demand for Ebola survival equipment. And police are appealing for witnesses after around £20 worth of coins were stolen from a charity wishing well in St Albans. A good use of police resources? BBC Three Counties Radio.
every weekday from three. Good afternoon, welcome to the show. Local people. What's your story? It seems there's a law for them and then there's one for the press. And I disagree with what they're saying. Local views. In some cases, sort of 40% loss in value on their properties. Has Kevin Luton got it right? There is a responsibility when you're paid from the public purse. Local life. Do you want to know how much my carer's allowance goes up by every April when the tax year changes? Two quid. Roberto Peroni. And is it fair to target people on benefits? Weekdays from three. BBC Three Counties Radio. Jonathan Vernon smith joins me with a ragged piece of paper. <laughs> what on earth have you been doing? I do look at the state of this place. The printers in this building <laughs> are as bad as some of the presenters. They're old, they're past it, they're decrepit, they're useless. I mean, look at it. Look what I'm having to read. Please, sir, my dog ate the homework. Um, just to explain to you, I've just printed yeah. uh, my little notes to tell you about what's coming up on my show, and uh, the printer has eaten half of the paper. So That's how good it is. I'm holding a very... A very crumpled piece of... Oh, have you printed another one? Thank you, Kelly. You see? Oh, isn't that nice? What's on your show this morning, Mr Crumpled Paper Man? Coming up on the big phone-in this morning, I think you might have an opinion on this. Oh. Is it selfish to live in a house that's too big for you? Oh. A senior Liberal Democrat says the government should encourage middle-aged people with spare rooms to downsize to make room for bigger families. Interesting idea. Lord Newby says more than half of people aged over 55 have more rooms than they need and they should be given financial incentives to move somewhere smaller. Empty nesters, as he calls them, would be doing a good thing for the rest of society if they vacated their big properties. However, older workers' advocate Ros Altman has said it's unfair to target the over 50s as even if they did want to downsize, there aren't enough houses for them to move into. Well, from nine this morning, I'm interested to get your reaction to this. Do you think it's selfish to live in a house that's too big for you? Are these private properties? Private properties? No, it's not selfish. Get lost. My house, I paid for the, it. Oh. Jog on. But for society, I mean, you're, you're a man who, uh, who cares greatly about the rest of society. I know yep. this, Ian. Yes, I do. I love people. So... To to live in a house that's frankly bigger than you require when there yep. is a shortage yep. of of good family houses, good family housing stock out there. Yep. Is that very selfish? No, nope, I paid for it. Next, move on. Thank you. Oh. Bye. No, I've worked for it. I've paid for it. If I choose to live, if I choose, I, I'm choosing what to do with my money. No, don't put it on me, uh, Liberal Democrats Coalition. Go and build some more houses. Don't oh. make me feel guilty. I'm not going to. I paid for it. It's mine. Bye. They can have the East Wing. But you see, I mean, my dad, he still lives in our in our family home. Yeah. A home, home that we, where you, my brother and I grew up in. Yeah. Got a beautiful garden, half an acre garden. Oy. It's lovely. Got nice, nice size. It's yeah. close to all the good schools. It's, it's a really lovely family house. Yeah. My dad just rattles around in it on his own now. Yeah. The, the garden, to be honest, he says, oh, there's too much work in the garden. Yeah. There, there could be children running around in his garden having fun. And he wouldn't know because it's so big. <laughs> making dens in the bushes like my brother and I used to. You've said something, though. You said he rattles around in that house on his own. He yeah. doesn't. He's got all his memories in there. He's rattling around with his memories. He has, but in this day and age where there's a real shortage of good quality family houses... Yeah. Should he not downsize and do the right thing for society? I don't, to be honest, I've never met your dad. I, I'll give him a call after the show and ask him if you want. The, say, just to let you know, Mr Vernon Smith, Jonathan's thinking of moving you out to, like, a bungalow. <laughs> just thought I should warn you. <laughs> He'll be delighted. <laughs> well, coming up this morning from nine, I'd like your reaction to this. Is it selfish to live in a house that's too big for you? Your call's on 08459 455 555. <laughs> If you hear a whisper, give us a shout. Ian Lee. BBC Three Counties Radio. 08459 455 555 is the telephone number. Hey, for a pregnant woman, she's still got really nice legs. Who's this? The um, princess. Oh, our future queen. I mean, the, the, the Daily Mail, they claim to be a classy newspaper. Have you ever seen the Daily Mail online? That ain't class. Uh, but they've got a picture of uh, the Duchess showing a thigh and then doing, doing funny legs, knock knees. Uh. Yeah. Hey, and I bet they're saying that she was showcasing or showing off her legs. Yeah. She was doing it for the male gaze. Well, the because male that's... gaze wouldn't be interested, Catherine. It'd be the male heterosexuals that would be interested. <laughs> wouldn't it? <laughs> and, and the lady gaze. Actually, the male gaze will be interested in that because they have an eye for style. 
That's a gross generalisation, and I apologise for that. Yeah, and their houses are decorated so nicely, and, and all of that Not stuff. Not all. I know some right slobby ones. <laughs> I know. It's, it's one of those myths, isn't it? 08459 455 555 is the telephone number if you want to give us a call. Uh, a busy show this morning. Let's have a little recap. Uh, we're trying to find an actor worse than Dev from Coronation Street. We've had a few... St- Shame Richie drunk acting. Yeah, that's pretty poor. But Dev, I mean, it's amazing he gets work doing acting when he actually can't act. He's awful, isn't he? 08459 455 555. Uh, your cab driver's stories. Why on earth, why on earth do we um, tip cab drivers? Why are we paying them extra for doing their job? Tell me what the fare is. I will pay the fare. My campaign I'm launching. Um, hey, listen, if Mike Reed, who is a BBC radio DJ, can uh, write a calypso about UKIP, where's your impartiality there? Got a soft spot for Mike Reed. He gave me my first ever pork pie. That's a true story. If Mike Reed can write a song about UKIP and still keep his job, if Paul Ross can... <laughs> and still keep his job, then I can start a campaign called Fair's Fair where we uh, abolish... Tipping in, in taxis. 08459 four double five five double five. I'm a worse actor than Dev from Coronation Street. I don't think you are. Give me something to say. Let's let's act do an act now. What's the situation? Okay, you're um, in a Shakespeare play and you're holding a skull. Okay. Do it. I'm doing it. Better than Dev. Better than I would pay top dollar to see uh, Dev in Othello. Oh, I would pay top dollar to see that. Because he'd be rubbish. And there's also this story. Grand pays £5,000 to Wi-Fi proof her home. Four coats of anti-radiation paint to beat her headache. Steve, headache. Stephen Milton Keynes. This is a nonsense, isn't it? They've seen her coming. Um, hi, Ian. Yes, I mean, I've got some experience of having to do EMC compatibility testing. So... What? In one of my What's that? In one, in one of my previous roles, I had to design ocean-going radar. This is before I got on to live machines and paper hands. Oh, this is, this is um, uh, Steve Cleverclogs. I've just worked out you are. Sorry, boss. Yes, go on. It's OK. Um, this so guy's a genius, dear listener. He knows what he's talking about. This isn't this isn't a Dennis or a Leslie. This guy's got actual brains, and he still listens to this nonsense. Steve, away you go, sir. Um, the radar that we were designing had some high-frequency electronics in it, and we had to shield that to stop the uh, electromagnetic waves getting out. So for that, we put a conformal coating on the inside of the uh, system housing. But it was quite a complicated process. We had acid etch and then uh, vapour deposit a layer of copper and nickel on the inside. But you can actually build a Faraday cage around products to stop electromagnetic radiation getting out. So, oh, OK. So Steve, you, Steve, I believe the government are trying to censor this conversation. We've lost you, Steve. Uh, and I blame the government because he was about to give us vital, vital information. I love a good Faraday cage. I don't understand how a Faraday cage works, but I do love a good Faraday cage. But, but what about um, those people? You get those... Uh, Paul Scoynes has emailed again. I once went... By the way, he didn't allow... Uh, his wife did not allow that cab driver to urinate in their house. Quite right, too. Uh, Paul Scoyne says, I once went to a bloke's house in Bedfordshire who'd cover the entire inside of his home with tin foil to block out radio waves from a nearby mobile mast. It is the tin hat brigade. His doors, walls and windows were covered in double layers. Are you sure he wasn't growing something? Something? He'd tipped his bed on its side and covered that too as a sort of anti-mobile mast cave. He still had bad headaches and he had trouble getting a TV signal. Fruitcakes, one and all. Fruitcakes, one and all. Got some texts? No, I'm just uh, oh. sorting this job out, but it's gone sour. Why? Well, you know that email I sent back? Yeah. He's responded straight away, obviously. Hey, he's, he's working. Keen. I he's mean, keen. it's... I don't know what what time it is where he's writing from, yeah. but he really needs a PA because he shouldn't be uh, yeah. doing this himself as an internationally re-owned artist. Yeah. Hi, Catherine. When I am the one offering you a job, tell your friend any time she goes to look for a job, she should ask the company to do so since you are not interested. Have a lovely day. Okay. Oh, the, the Kath, this is yours. Get back telling you I are have, interested. I have. I, I, this is what I've written back. Hang on. I sh- I'll tell you. I'll tell you. Because I think I can still... I, I can salvage this. Just misunderstanding, which is why I need a PA, really. Yeah. Um, 
just to put commas in his sentences apart from anything else. I am very interested, but would like to see to whom I'm talking. As a renowned artist, you are surely familiar with the fact that some people would seek to use your good name to pursue dishonest ends. Yeah. I look forward to seeing your photograph so that we may begin what will be a successful and fruitful working relationship. Very best wishes, Catherine. I would, put, I, I would suggest a PS. Mm? PS, I have a bank account. That way he knows it's easy to pay you. OK. Might just swing it in, his, in, in your favour. Although it's not... Go- uh, Paul has emailed in. Paul James. Yes. Uh, he says, don't get me wrong, I'm pleased that Catherine's been offered the job, but uh, Mr M- Ibn Yassin hasn't told me I've been sacked. In fairness, I haven't actually done anything yet. Uh, it, it could be a scam. Yeah. Um, well, sorry to break it to you, Paul. I do love... I love these scams. This may not be a scam, of course. No, this of course could it's be, not a scam. Yeah, absolutely Pat, genuine. if you do get the job... Yeah. yeah would you yeah, be yeah. leaving us? Uh, well, no, because it wouldn't interfere with my current job, so that's the beauty of it, really. That's what he says. That's what makes it so attractive, that's you what see. what makes it almost what what if irresistible. If, what if they... What if you were so good at it... You, I will be. They just wanted you full-time. Why are you struggling to spit this sentence out, Kelly? Where are you going with it, mate? I don't know what well, you're suggesting. I'm a bit upset, to be honest. No, nah, I'd be good. We might be losing cash. No, nah, I'd be great. Who would we get in her place? I don't know, some donut. I mean, a literal donut. That's a chance you take. <laughs> Travel news for beds, cards, and bugs. BBC Three Counties Radio. Starting off on the M1, looking very heavy moving, heading northbound between Junction 12 for Flitwick and Junction 14 at Milton Keynes. The A1M's looking heavy on the sensors just around Junction 7 for Stevenage. And the M25 heading anti-clockwise, very slow moving between Junction 21 for the M1 and Junction 16 at the M40. Taking a look at so far in Watford, at the moment the traffic lights aren't working, just on St Albans Road at Langley Road, so do approach that with care. And the M40 heading northbound, looking very slow on camera between the Denham roundabout to the M at 25. Nicola Richards, BBC Three Counties Radio. Across beds, hearts and bugs. This is BBC Three Counties Radio. It's 8.30, I'm Simon Oxley. Milton Keynes Council has objected to government plans to cut red tape in the taxi industry, but last night the House of Lords said controversial parts of the deregulation bill could go ahead. A Bedfordshire-based company says it's struggling to meet demand for Ebola survival equipment, and police are appealing for witnesses after around £20 worth of coins were stolen from a charity wishing well in St Albans Park. Three Counties Sports. BBC Three Counties Radio. Watford are down to second in the championship after being held two all at home by Nottingham Forest. Odion Agarlo and Amatej Vidra penalty had twice put the Hornets in front. Here's head coach Slavisa Jokanovic. In the future I expect we're going to dominate uh, still, uh, still more. It's my first day here. I'm very happy we have so many supporters. I expect next, uh, next game here we're going to try doing better and we're going to try win. Milton Keynes Dons are up to fourth in League One after coming from behind to beat Fleetwood 2 1 at Stadium MK. Carl McFadzin and a late penalty from Benica Phoebe gave Carl Robinson's side the points. I thought the boys tonight were magnificent. Honestly, I really, really do. I'm so, so proud. I said them at half time at 0 0. These are nights, these are special nights. These are nights to determine who you are as an individual. And we've not been able to stand up and be counted over, over recent years in these evenings. I think we certainly have done today against a very, very good side as well because they're a good team. Wickham stay top of League Two despite losing 2 1 at Exeter and after taking an early lead through Peter Murphy. Luton a third, just a point behind Wickham after a Mark Cullen hat trick gave John Still's side a 3 1 win over Dagenham at Kenilworth Road. Took his goals brilliantly today, brilliantly. And um, I'm so pleased for him because he works hard in training. Uh, he's a conscientious uh, guy, technically very, very good, and you know, I think it was a perfect performance from tonight. That's so why I brought him off a little bit early, you know, that the crowd show their appreciation for, for a good night's work for him. But Stevenage lost 3 2 at Portsmouth, despite goals from Dean Wells and Chris Beardsley. And in the Champions League, Chelsea thrashed Maribor 6 0. Manchester City let slip a 2 0 lead to draw 2 all against CSKA in Moscow. Tonight it's Liverpool versus Real Madrid and Arsenal away to Anderlecht. BBC Three Counties News and Sport. The next full bulletin is at 9. Call 08459 455 555. BBC Three Counties Radio talking about whether you should cover up when you go into church. Of course you should. It's respect, isn't it? 
You go into someone's place of worship, you should cover up. This, this thing here, I'm, I don't get uh, Benedict Cumberbatch. First of all, I mean, as names go, gosh, really? Your surname's Cumberbatch? So they decided to call you Benedict? How many C's and E's does a man need in his own name? Sherlock poses a double mystery. Sherlock fans must think they are seeing double with these two pictures of Benedict Cumberbatch. But it's elementary. Madame Tussauds unveiled his waxwork in London yesterday and the lifelike figure would fool even Dr Watson. Well, no, it wouldn't, because all waxworks, as we know, are rubbish. And Benedict Cumberbatch looks like a waxwork. That's why this waxwork might seem particularly good, because he looks like a waxwork I like with him. a slightly melted face. I like his funny face. He's always, I, don't, I don't get him. He's always whinging because he's posh. And he thinks it's unfair that he only gets posh parts. Well, you're posh, mate. The wax... Why do people still go to Madame Tussauds? Hmm. Because it's rubbish, isn't it? Really? I don't know. I've never been. I don't think British people go. I think it's the French, mm. maybe the Italians, mm. that, that tend to go. Because it's always a big queue. On the, on the Marleybone Road, when you drive past it, there's always a massive queue of idiots queuing in to go and see plastic things, go and see big, giant candles. Do you know they used to use real the heads of real um, people? People, yeah, to do those. What do you mean to do Madame, those? Madame Tussauds was like a was like a revolutionary, and oh, she used gosh. to take the heads of the fallen aristocrats. Here they've fallen; they've been pushed into something sharp and had their heads whacked off. Here we go. Yeah, she's. Uh, this is from horrible histories, by the way. Okay, yeah. You'd know if you'd watch it. Yeah, yeah. And she used to dip their heads in wax, oh, and then she used to put fake eyes and teeth. In now the that I'd go and see a real a real head dipped in wax. People did a real head dipped in hundreds of thousands. Mmm, yummy. Did you ever go and see mm. that Body Works exhibition? No, that was the German fella who yeah. um, had loads of dead bodies. Yeah, I went to see that. It put me right off Palmer Ham for a good six months. Really? Mm. I like Ripley's. Oh yeah, I know what. I'm going to go and pay twenty odd quid to go and look at a load of old rubbish. Yeah, it's good rubbish. It's like a giant house made out of matchsticks. What do you like to look at, Ian? Myself. I like to look at myself in the mirror and do this with my hair. What else? I also like to look at my monkey's record collection and do this with my hair. And when you're not doing that, what, what do you do? This with my hair. Oh. Across beds, hearts and bucks. This is Ian Lee. BBC Three Counties Radio. You're right, Just. Hey, good morning, Princess. I reported Justin Dealey. That's you on Five Live last night. Mm, absolutely, yeah. So is this. I reported Justin Dealey. Geezer. I'm now in the urinal <laughs> section. Come here, give me a big cuddle. Do you mind if I touch it? As you know, I, I deal in facts and not fiction. I'm naked in bed. I don't do a programme about Adolf Hitler. I think there are people out there with special powers. I reported Justin Dealey. There we go. Thank you very much indeed. <laughs> uh, Justin. Yeah, on yeah. national radio last night. I know. Right? The, 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 several members of the, uh, the team here have been chasing that dollar mm -hmm. for, for a long time. Our whole careers have been building up to it, mm -hmm. and you just keep giving it on a, on a plate. Well, the thing is, um, don't go looking for it. That's my top tip to people in the building. Let them come to you. It's what happened yesterday. OK. What have you got for us this morning, Just? Well, two topical sets of uh, street reaction coming up here. <laughs> wow. <laughs> <laughs> um, you mentioned this in the paper review earlier on, about dressing up for God. Yes. And the fact that people have no respect when they go to church. Now, I would have thought... Northern women, common women... Uh, yeah. Northern women... Pardon? Northern women... Sorry? <laughs> Northern women... A... Northern women. You what? Northern women. Say again. Northern women. That's what I thought you said. And common women oh. dress up when they go to weddings or christenings or sometimes even to church on a Sunday mm -hmm. like slappers. Awful. Well, I would have thought this morning, taking this one to the streets, that nobody would have had a story to tell. I've been inundated with people telling me about some of the, the things they've seen in churches at weekends. Here is one clip for you. Just take a listen to this, Ian. Taking it to the streets with J Dog. Francis, you go to church every weekend, correct? Yeah, every year. Okay. Tell us what sort of things you're seeing. Do you uh, see people who who don't dress respectfully for God? Oh yeah, I see a lot of them. Ladies dressing uh, with mini skirts and 
uh, some of the guys with caps on and uh, I mean with dark uh, sunglasses. I mean, it doesn't show respect for God, you know. Wow, that's incredible. <laughs> and you're seeing that, what, every weekend? Yeah, I see that every weekend, you know. Are you ever tempted to say to these people, why can't you dress respectfully for God? Yeah, sometimes the, the preacher man even tells, I mean, I mean, when he's preaching. But, you know, some, some just come to church to show off what they have, you know. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, come on, secretly. Do you like seeing those girls in the miniskirts? Come on, man to man here. Do you like that? No, I don't. I don't. I mean, they are very tempting. Mm. Uh, indeed, very tempting. So, you know, if you are serious for God, for Christ, you know, you... You don't do that. Yeah, you don't do that. Yeah. <laughs> you got a lot of respect. Thank you so much for your time. Appreciate that. Great story. Take care. Thank you, sir. Thank you, sir. Thank you. Bye. Love it. Take all right, mate, go, go, let him go. He's go gone. Ahead. Wow, incredible. So apparently, according to him, we're not talking about christenings or, or weddings here. This is somebody who goes to church every single Sunday, and he's seeing people turn up in baseball caps and mini skirts. Incredible. It, l- listen, you take your hat off when you go into a church. Even yeah. I know that. I'm not religious, but even I know. You take your hat off and you take your sunnies off your plums. I, I know, I know. These are religious people. This is the year 2014. This is what's happening when people go into churches. No respect at all. Well. So that's number one. Number two, you've been talking talking about taxi drivers this morning in Milson Keynes. Yes, mate. Led you on to talking about, do you ever tip taxi drivers? I don't get the tipping of the taxi driver. What's that? They're, they're paid. They tell us what the fare is. Mm-hmm. Well, that should be that. It's all cash in hand for these guys, for a significant number of these guys. This is why black cab drivers, they've all got swimming pools and ponies. <laughs> <laughs> and oh, chocolate but... fountains <sighs> instead of taps. If only that was true. It's if true. Only. Oh, if oh only. mate. Come oh, on. Oh, mate. Black cab drivers. I'm not yeah. talking minicabs. Black cab drivers in London, they are raking it in. And most of it, my friend, unless you ask for a receipt, yeah. is the C-I-H, the cash <laughs> in hand. And you know that's true. My neighbour is a London cabbie, and as you know, I live in a very exclusive area. Yeah. Gated <laughs> community. Yeah. Incredible. You, your your neighbour can afford a, an extra fridge out on the driveway. On the drive, yeah. That's on how the wealthy they are. Yep. Wow. If only you guys dealt in fact and not Wait. fiction like me. Oh, you're so Come like, on. Look at you trying to sound like the working man. It is absolutely true. You get me one taxi driver on your show this morning who's got a swimming pool. You won't yeah. find no, one. I won't find one that'll admit it because <laughs> then they know the Inland Revenue will be around there. Excuse okay. me, sir. Can I look at your books? Oh, and by the way, why are you using a sat nav? You're supposed to have the knowledge. Yeah. And what's that around your mouth? Hmm. Have you got a chocolate fountain instead of taps? <laughs> <laughs> Busted. <laughs> honestly, honestly, it's true Amazing. about black cab drivers. I've taken this one to the streets as well, asking people if they tip taxi drivers. I think you're going to like this, and I think you'll like the Germans at the end, who give us a, oh. a bit of a twist on this. Herman. Here's what happened. <laughs> Taking it to the streets with J Dog. Stephen, do you tip taxi drivers? Uh, no. <laughs> <laughs> what? You're laughing about it. Uh, T- tell us why you don't. Do they not deserve it? I don't know. If they've if they've given us the price, and I just think we should just pay that. Uh, if they've done anything extra, then maybe we'll we'll tip them. But most of the time, it's just A to B. So I don't know if they deserve it myself personally. Sounds so. to me like you've never ever given a taxi driver a tip. No, no. Honest, honest, honest answer to a, to a question, yeah. <laughs> no, uh, I don't really believe in it. I do tip when it's uh, at a restaurant or something like that, but it doesn't actually come into my mind to ta- tip taxi drivers. Why, why not, though? Um, it's just not an industry that I think is, is in the, the sort of tipping kind of you know sector, if that makes sense. Okay. So when it comes to tipping, my taxi right now, do you, uh, do you believe in tipping? No, I don't. Uh, I, just, I just don't. So you've never tipped them once? No, not at all. Are you a bit harsh? A bit too hard? No, uh, I, get, I get enough money as it is. So even if the fare was, let's say, seven ninety-five, and you gave him £8, you would still expect that 5p back? I'd probably, probably let him have 5p. Well, that's generous of you. Yeah. Great right. story. Thanks for your time. Oh, OK, fair enough. Do you tip taxi drivers? Yes. You do? Yes. Why? Why not? Where are you from? Germany. Ah, right. You see, everyone I'm speaking to this morning here in Luton says, no, you're from Germany. You're generous Germans. Yeah. Are you a generous German? I think so. What We should have called this section, Justin. Mm. What's the tipping point? Yes, that would have been a good one. That would have been an excellent one, wouldn't mm, it? It would. I just don't see the point. And sometimes... Tip of the iceberg. No. And sometimes you give... Tip a t- of the morning. To you. No, sometimes... 
Um, tip your neck. <laughs> it's good. Top tip condition. Tip top. Tip whatever. Top tip. No, you're right. Oh, thanks. Sometimes, though, you'll give them a tip and they'll look at it. And look at you. Ball? All right, you can go away. Your microphones are off now, for goodness sakes. I'm, doing a se- I'm trying to do a serious... I'm trying to do a serious piece Sometimes again. Sometimes I look at your tip and say what? <laughs> Won't get this on Five Live. Yeah, you, you, get, you get your tip out mm. for a cabbie t- to slip them a tip. Yeah. And they just look at it with disgust and say, what have you got that for? But you can put that away. I'm not okay. interested in that tip. Here is my top tip for you this morning. Oh, and yeah. all of our listeners across beds, hearts and bugs. Yes, mate. You can get those awkward moments, like you say, when somebody expects that tip, whether yeah. you're in a, a taxi, well, whether you're They want you're a bigger a, tip. Yeah, you, they, they, they want a big fat tip. I, pay, can't pay on give them a, I can't give them a big fat tip. Pay on card. Sorry? If you pay on card, they won't give you that look. No. In a restaurant, you, you, you pay on card, would you like to give a tip? No, no. That used to happen. <laughs> Where I've been now... But it still happens, mate. And then, no, no. You skip by it. You no. skip by oh, oh, sorry, I missed that. Sorry. Next time. It's simple. Pay by card every time, when and then give, they don't expect a tip. When you give the tip on the card, right, in the restaurants, you don't. Um, where does that money... Where does that money go? Does that go to, like, head office? I've does it go no to idea. that office? Does it go to that lady's back pocket? We used to have a tin. Sorry? When I was a waitress, we used to have a tin. Was I talking to you? Well, I thought you I'm might t- want an expert opinion from t- a former waitress. I'm talking to my mate, Just. So I used to have a tin. I'm not... And then at the end of the night, we'd just um, divvy it out. Yeah, I'm did talking... You, which I didn't did think you divvy it out between each... Yeah, I didn't think I'm that trying to talk, was, Justin, I'm trying to talk to you, and these two are wittering yeah. on about absolutely... I've got no idea what they're talking about. I'm going to tell you something that's going to shock you right Please now. Please do, mate. Yeah, go okay. on. I, I know somebody who works in a restaurant. That is very shocking, yeah, Just. Thanks yeah, okay. very much. We're, we're coming to it. We're coming to it. No, it's not snacks. I know somebody who works in a restaurant, and all of those tips are placed into a jar. And that money at the end of the month it is divided between the staff That's he gets hang on, hang on he gets on average 300 pounds a month well, what restaurant does it what, what i'm not going to say which what one type of restaurant does he work in it's, it's a magic. nice restaurant yeah i don't 300 quid a month what? extra on his salary each each i don't believe that absolutely true he's lying to you mate. no he's not he's well have you gone and counted it nope well then you don't know he, why would he lie about something like that? Because people lie about how much money they get. It's a basic. <sighs> I Tell don't you what, know. though, that sounds like a sweet gig. Yeah, mm. doesn't mm. it? Well, then, in that case, his boss should pay him less. <laughs> oh, you see, dearie, Justin? Dearie, mate. Thank you very much indeed. I wait four five nine four double five five double five. 455 quid. I got six quid if I was lucky. I always got left a tip of 10p. That's just rude. I gave a... You know I don't like buskers. They're rubbish. I was in an high street, a royal high street at the weekend, and there was an old fella, and he was busking. He was rubbish. But opposite him was a Peruvian food store. Mm. What right. do they sell? I don't know. Oh, Peruvian food. And this old fella was rubbish, right? And he's playing. And you could see, they saw the fellas behind the Peruvian food store look at him, look at each other, laugh, and they turn their radio up to oh. 11. To 11. You couldn't hear him. You couldn't oh. hear him. I went and gave him a fiver. And he wouldn't, it was then it was a bit embarrassing, because then he wouldn't stop waving at me. He kept waving and doing the OK sign. I'm thinking, don't look at me, Phil. I'm not your mate. I'm doing it to prove a point to the Peruvians. Do you know what I'd do if I was a busker? Yeah? I'd, I'd do a, Sounds of Silence. I'd play a song and then mime it and so they think that I'm brilliant. But then you wouldn't be making any noise. <laughs> I'd play it loud. Well, hang on, if you're, if you're miming it, Kelly, you, you, wouldn't be making, you wouldn't be making any noise. So loud or quiet, crazy, crazy idea. <laughs> Travel news for beds, cards and bugs. BBC Three Counties Radio. Starting off on the M1. Um, looking very heavy at the moment between Junction 12 for Flitwick and Junction 14 for Milton Keynes. And it's queuing on the M25, heading anti-clockwise between Junction 19 at Watford and Junction 16 for the M40. Taking a look in Boreham Wood and it's queuing on the camera on the Barnet Bypass, heading southbound between Stirling Corner and Mill Hill Circus. And taking a look so far at the M40, very slow on camera, heading northbound from the Denham Roundabout to the M25. So far, no reported problems or delays to the trains. Nicola Richards, BBC Three Counties Radio. Thank you, Nicola. 8.46, Wednesday, 22nd of October. I'm Ian Lee. These are your headlines on BBC Three Counties Radio. Government plans to cut red tape in the taxi industry have been uh, have been backed by the House of Lords, despite objections from Milton Keynes Council. 
The Milton Keynes-based home retail group is to close a quarter of its home-based DIY stores. Oh, and I'd forgotten this story. We can talk about this in the last 15 minutes. Police are defending an investigation into a theft of around £20 in coins from a charity wishing well in St Albans. If you were listening an hour ago, you would have heard the police coming on and doing an appeal. Now, while it's terrible that this money has been taken, the wishes would still be granted... Police investigating 20 quid, Nick, from a wishing well. Is that the best use of their resources? 08459 455 555. You look like you're going to speak, Catherine. I've got a moral ob- ob- objection. Your Honour. Of which more in a moment. Thank you. <laughs> Beds, hearts and bucks weather. BBC Three Counties Radio. Good morning. It's a less windy day today. A bright but chilly start across all three counties. Temperatures still in single figures, but gradually it will start to warm up. The cloud will increase through the course of the day, turning the sunshine a little hazier as we head through. But the maximum temperature feeling a touch milder thanks to the lessened breeze of 13 Celsius. Overnight tonight, the cloud thickens. We'll get one or two spots of rain. Quite cloudy, which will make it feel milder. The minimum temperature down to 10 Celsius. So grey start tomorrow, one or two outbreaks of rain, particularly for places higher up, places like the Children's for example, or the Downs. Maximum temperature a milder 15 Celsius and that's your forecast. Have you ever had the urge to change the world? To leave the house with a bath towel draped over your shoulders? To walk into the office with your pants over your trousers? To spend the whole day sporting a pair of yellow pugsy ears? Then you are Captain Costume, my friend. A fundraising fancy dresser, proud to don silly outfits in the name of raising money. So go on, be a hero for BBC Children in Need. Sign up and pledge your allegiance at bbc.co.uk slash pudsey. Across beds, hearts and bucks. This is Ian Lee. BBC Three Counties Radio. This wishing well story, Catherine. Just remind us of this story. This, what what happened? This is the story of a wishing well that's in a park in St Albans. Yeah. It was padlocked. It's not just you know random fountain where people can chuck money in and indeed whip it out without anyone noticing. Yeah. So the padlock was broken and the protective cover removed so that some ne'er do well could nick twenty pounds in coins. Now, can I permission to speak freely? Well, always. Twenty. Six years ago, yes. Oh, I was buying my second album that I'd ever bought, yes. Monkeys Greatest yes. Hits Double. Mm. Didn't have enough money, right? So what I did, I went to the fountain outside the Queensmere Shopping Centre in Slough, and I put my hand in and I took a few quid out. Right. Was that Queensmere Centre um, fountain dedicated to a certain charity? It, the money probably would have gone somewhere. I don't know. Don't know though. I just uh, that's different. That's different because that's not an obvious donation. That's just people being... And I would say it's morally reprehensible in these times of shortage to be throwing money yeah. into puddles of water. Oh. So I've not got a problem with this particular fountain because yeah. it's obviously dedicated to a charity and yeah. it is secured. Is- yeah. I wait four five nine four double five five double five is the phone number. Now, the thing about this is, and it's for the Hearts and Middlesex Wildlife Trust who do excellent work, and this is in no way knocking them, and it must be very upset- upsetting, of course. But I just think the, you know, the, the police will have already spent more on this investigation than the 20 quid. Yeah. And when people get their cars broken into and all they get is a crime number... Uh, I just think it's. I just think they're doing it to look good, and I, th- I think it might be backfiring ever so slightly. There's also an argument that keeping money outside is a dodgy thing to do, a risky thing to do, and so you shouldn't be surprised when this kind of thing happens. Oh wait, four five, last ten minutes of the show. Am I being a little bit harsh on this? Oh wait, four five nine four double five five double five is the telephone number. Did the, the police investigating twenty quid worth? I mean, we had a police officer on today, and he was. Um, I said, well, do you really think people are going to phone up and tell you, you know, they know the kids that took this and they know where the pennies are? He said, well, yeah, hopefully. They're not, are they? You're not going to get someone phoning the police saying, yeah, you know that £20 that was stolen in in, uh, in pennies and uh, five penny bits? Uh, five penny bits? How old am I? Uh, well, uh, yeah, we know the kids stroke druggies what done take them, and I believe those pennies are stashed under the bed of Stephen Rogers at number 32, the high street. Stephen Rogers is probably an innocent man, we should point out. I should. Stephen Rogers, I do apologise if I've slurred your name. But 
I'm always watching you, Rogers. I'm always yeah. watching you. Waste of police time investigating 20 quid worth of coins that have been nicked. Uh, yeah, I think so. And it's throwing money into a wishing well a stupid thing to do anyway. Police should give them a crime number um, and they should get a bigger padlock. 08459 four double five five double five is the telephone number if you want to give us a call. Paul's in Biggleswade. Morning, Paul. Uh, morning, Ian. What would you like to say? I know it's a bit late to bring this up now, but uh, with the wishing well uh, issue, what, what's been bugging me all morning is how do they know it was £20 that was taken? Oh, mate, you are... You are good. Well, it seems obvious to me. How do they know? You, it's a brilliant... What you've done there, Paul, is you've done what uh, I often forget to do and some of my team have forgotten to do on this. Ask the obvious question. Mm. Ask the obvious... How do they know? You're right, because it was in a sealed container. Yeah. It would never have been counted. No, no, there wasn't a slot, the automatic robot that sits there counting the money as it goes in. No. They, 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 I mean, yes, they could have bumped that figure up somewhat. Yeah, or it could be less, even. Do you think, Paul, that... Um, it, it, it's not the best use of police time, is it, really, investigating this and doing an appeal for this? Well, I think... No, I think it's right that it should be reported as a crime. Yep. And I think the police should should report it. Uh, but um, yeah, I doubt very much whether they're going to get very far with it, unless there's uh, CCTV or something on, on, on the thing where they can see who nicked it, you know. Paul, I really appreciate you, and I, I think we can all learn a lesson from Paul's call. Ask the obvious question. Hadn't even occurred to me. How do they know it's 20 quid that's gone? <sighs> Joe's on the line. Morning, Joe. Hi. What have you got for us? Uh, well, I have, it's about that wishing well, and I happen to know that well. Oh, yeah. Um, do you know it well? I, I know it very well. Yeah. It's a good well. Um, I just think well, it's well, very well. easy to trivialise the police and trivialise 20 quid yeah. and just, just brush it off. Yeah. But the point is, is that it's a very well-secured well. Well. And, well, well. Well, well, well. well. Um, and so it's not in plain view. It's not a matter of somebody going in and just just dipping their hand. Oh, in. they've had to ju- they've had to break a padlock and jimmy jimmy it open, haven't they? They've they've had to break several padlocks and get through raw iron covers. Right. And the fact that the money's on plain view now that says an awful lot more about the twenty quid, which is trivial. It's more of a fact of what else are they going to do if they've taken that time to go for such a small amount of money then. Maybe it is worth the police putting out an appeal because um, what other sort of thing are they going to do in the area? See, this is what I said earlier on, Joe. It is that if these kids get the frighteners put on them now, we're assuming they're kids, right? If these people get the frighteners put on them now, it may be that they don't try anything like that again. I mean, that chance is worth taking, isn't it? I would say so, yeah. I but mean, they're into that much trouble, then what's yeah. a TV set or a video or something through. Oh, through. Joe, now you're showing your age with a, a video. video. I know. No one's going to steal a video <laughs> recorder. I suppose the thing is, Joe, and I, 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 by the way, I'm not trivialising what happened. You know, I, I think this, the uh, Hearts of Middlesex Wildlife Trust are, are fab, OK? So I'm not knocking them, right? But when people uh, get their wake up in the morning and find their cars have been broken into and stuff has been nicked from the back seat of their cars, yes. and they phone the police, and and all they get is a crime number. Yeah. To, 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 to hear, you know, a police officer on the radio trying to track down 20 quid in coins, they might think it's a little unfair. When you put it like that, yes. But I know I'd be able to break into a car if I wanted to. It's just a matter of putting something through a window. This was an awful lot of hard work gone into getting something that was in plain sight. So it's not as if they were chancing it going, oh, there might be a lot of money in there. They yeah. could plainly see the coins. Joe, stay there, because so... Mark, Mark wants to have a word. Morning, Mark. Hello, Ian. Mark, what do you want to say? Um, just a bit of amused, actually. You seem to think that it's a bad idea for the police to be doing anything about this because it's so trivial. But why are you giving it so much air time? Why not? It's trivial. So you think it is trivial? Yeah, I do. So you're agreeing with me? I am. But you're disagreeing with me at the same time. My brain can't handle that, Mark. No, I'm only, I'm only saying it should be giving you so much air time. There must be more important things to talk about. He's got, do you know what? He's got quite a good point, actually, Joe, hasn't he? Um, I think he's got a point in that I do think that you've trivialised the story. Oh. I don't think the point is the 20 oh. quid. I think it's very easy to focus on, oh, it's 20 quid and yeah. brush it away. What we need to look is at, at the people that have done it yeah. and um, 
do we want them still out there, you know, d- doing that sort of thing? So, in M- my opinion, yes, I think it is. Mark, Joe is I saying that the airtight that I have trivialised the story, which may or may not be true, uh, uh, but the story is well worth covering because we don't want these mindless hoodlums out there. Well, that's a fair point, Ian, but why don't, we, why don't the police just give them the 20 quid and are done with it? It'd be so much easier. Joe? Why don't we just give everybody anything they want and then that, that will stop them stealing stuff? How are we ever going to find them? We're going to find them. Isn't that the point of a police appeal? <laughs> yes, I'm wasting time as well. Mark, uh, Joe, thank you very much indeed. There we go. I don't think... I, well, maybe I am trivialising it. I don't know. I, I just say, I've I all respect... I don't think we're tri- trivialising it. I think we're questioning it. We, I think we are... With that, I, I would suggest that that's a slightly better way of putting it, but then I would, because it's me that's being accused of trivialising it. Yeah, but you're just my mouthpiece. How's... Oh. How's your new job going? Have you heard back from your um, potential he, boss? He's gone quiet, but there's good news for Kelly. Oh. He's emailed me. What? <laughs> yeah, he says, Be informed that with reference to your CV, oh, we have on. recommended you to Mr M. Ibn Yazin, a renowned... I used to go to school with a kid called Mr M. Did Ibn Yazin. They wish to employ me as his personal assistant to handle and his, his financial, financial errands in and around, around your county. county. No, no, this, this will, will in no way interfere with, with your present, present job, so, so if, if you are interested, interested contact, contact him on. on... And then it's blank. Yeah. Ask him for a photo... Do you want me to forward what I wrote? Maybe you could do the same thing. Or, shall I do something different? Send him a photo of you I just holding up my, your bank account details. Should I just send him my bank account? Yeah, okay. send him your bank account, see what happens. All right, then. It's got to be worth a go, isn't it? Yeah, sure. Oh, wait, 459 four, double, five, five, double, five. Don't use that number to call me because this show is, is grinding to a halt. I think it ground to a halt about 25 minutes ago. Uh, but that's the number to call if you want to speak to Jonathan Vernon Smith, who's on immediately after all this nonsense. <laughs> Travel news for beds, cards and bugs. BBC Three Counties Radio. Starting off on the M1, it's very heavy moving on the speed sensors between Junction 13 for Bedford and Junction 14 for Milton Keynes. Queuing on the M25, heading anti-clockwise at the moment between Junction 19 at Watford and Junction 16 for the M40. In Watford at the moment, the traffic lights aren't working on St Albans Road, just at Langley Road, so do approach that with care. The M25 heading clockwise, that's looking rather slow through the roadworks area, just at Junction 25 Enfield. And the M40, very slow moving on camera at the moment heading northbound from the Denham roundabout to the M25. The A10 the Great Cambridge Road, that's looking heavy on camera between Bullsmore Lane and Southbury Road. And so far checking on the trains, no reported problems or delays. Nicola Richards, BBC Three Counties Radio. Nicola, thank you very much well done, excellent stuff, that's it, that's your lot. Thank you Catherine, thank you Kelly, thank you uh, Five Live reporter Justin Dealey Thank you for all of your calls JBS is up next from us. We'll be back tomorrow at six. Until then, ta-ta. Local and vocal across beds, hearts and bucks. This is BBC Three Counties Radio. Thank you, Ian. Good morning. Welcome to the JBS Show. I'm Jonathan Vernon-Smith. It's Wednesday, it's nine o'clock. And on today's big phone-in, is it selfish to live in a house that's too big for you? A senior...